Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Always nice to start with a with a little a bit of a, a giggle, a bit of a laugh. Cle- clear the lungs, clear the lungs. <laughs> clear the lungs, alhamdulillah. All right, brothers and sisters, mashallah. Today we're back on the uh, Perfect Storm, episode 13. Um, if you're not familiar with the uh, with the layout of how we go, basically you come on board, you tell us what you believe, and then we put it through the storm and see if it stands up to scrutiny. Um, and so this stream is for non-Muslims to come on and tell us what they believe, and then we'll uh, have a, a conversation with you. How are you doing, brothers? I, I seem to be perpetually live streaming. Yeah, I, I call you, I call you, mashallah, the, um, the Truman Just call me Netflix, show. mate. Just call me Netflix. Just call I call Netflix. you the Truman, Truman Show the because, Truman mashallah, show, seriously. you just need a camera fixed on you all the time. Oh, subhanallah. Now. I enjoy it, though. But, subhanallah. Well, alhamdulillah. I mean, the thing is, it does. Uh, it, there's, there's still hundreds, if not thousands, of people that watch your even your shop stream. And then I like the fact that sometimes there's some very interesting guests that come on, <laughs> and it really makes it brilliant. And I said, well, 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 sometimes I do some nice uh, dower in the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or just my sales techniques. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, the trolls. Are, like I said, we've got friendly trolls at the moment. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the funny thing is, I remember one of the streams when I think it was uh, um, two Christians, they started debating with one another, and you were just serving customers and just look, <laughs> looking at the camera. <laughs> That's just thought, a lot. Amazing. All right, guys, so we put the link out, um, and so you're welcome to come onto the stream. As I say, it's for non-Muslims. Uh, perfect storm. You basically tell us what you believe, put it through the storm, and then we uh, discuss with you uh, we question you about your beliefs uh, and we take it from there. Atheists are also welcome uh, uh, and obviously non-Muslims are also welcome. But we've got Brother Mehmet who's uh, joined us and I'm sure Brother Mehmet is actually a Muslim. But you know what? I'm going to just let him on for one minute <laughs> just to say salam to him. Brother Mehmet, salam alaikum. Brother Mehmet. Oh, he's gone. He came on my fantasy Premier League stream last night. Did he? Talking about Tottenham. Oh, did he? <laughs> okay, I swear, funny. I swear it's Jordan doing some kind of flexy voice. No, it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> I'm Jordan. telling you, when I tell you that now, you will hear Mehmet speak, right? And it is Jordan doing like a Jeff voice. I see you, Jordan, in the chat. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. So atheists are also welcome, as I've mentioned, on the stream. Um, you know, to tell us why you uh, why you don't believe in God? Because I, you know it's very interesting, Hamza. I was listening to the uh, the free podcast. Um, excuse me, the free podcast um, that um, the audio book from uh, Hamza Sources is on YouTube. If you guys want to uh, listen to it, um, you know the Divine Reality, and it's got I think a couple of chapters on there. It's quite nice to li to listen to, and I think some of the points that I uh, you know, I, I heard mentioned on on that on that sort of on that um, um, po podcast that he did is that the majority of people actually believe in a creator in this world, and the atheist point of view is a view actually that is outside of what is intuitive as to what the vast majority of people believe in this world, and so rather than the deist having to prove the existence of God, really the onus is on them to, to prove to us how all of matter and energy can come about somehow by itself. And so the onus is actually on them because if, you, if it can't come from nothingness and you are reliant on some sort of beginning, that beginning needs an explanation. Completely. And the infinite regress means that that beginning has to be uncaused. Do you know? Do you know, do you know bigger problem they've got, bro? Yeah, yeah. Because I've been reading my book. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Little hypothesis. Uh, yeah, yeah, fill my yeah. brain up with all sorts of stuff. Uh, uh, okay. The bigger problem they've got is evolution. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll explain why. Because evolution, the idea is that it's through random mutation that natural selection 
utilizes the proteins created to um, create new organic material. All right, so that, that's the idea. So natural selection, sorry, um, mutation, random mutation, natural selection, and then uh, it utilizes it. Now, the problem you've got is for, for random, for, even if natural selection is a thing, it needs to utilize, it needs to get this protein from somewhere, right? And what the atheist has to posit is that, well, yeah, this just randomly mutates and it just appears, right? It, it's just like a, you know, it becomes something else. All right. Now, the problem you've got is when you measure up the probability of, um, when you measure up the probability of um, it being that way and not being that way, the, the amount of um, non-ways, completely yeah. outnumbered by billions and trillions yeah yeah so to say it, it happened yeah it's, it's more likely one billion trillion not to happen yeah, yeah. and they've got to just have this presupposition well well it must have happened yeah but that's yeah. all they got yeah. and, and what it's called is called abductive reasoning yeah where they where they take an, they take um, an event and they um reverse engineer it and try to work out what could have happened but the problem they tie themselves in not is because they deny a supernatural thing. Yeah. But the whole thing points to supernatural. The whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Fine tuning points to supernatural. The originator yeah. of the universe points to supernatural. Yeah. So chemistry, physics, and biology all point to the supernatural. Yeah, but because yeah. they've handicapped themselves and they refuse to accept the existence of the supernatural, yeah. they're stuck on the, this, this hypothesis. So this yeah. is a challenge. I just want to reiterate what you said, Abbas. Atheists and Christians hiding in the chat. Understand yeah. what this stream is. It's for you to showcase your belief. Yes, yeah. atheist, it's a belief. You yeah. to tell us why you believe atheism is the way that people should live. They shouldn't yeah. live believing in sky daddies and sky wizards. They yeah. should believe in themselves and that there is no life after death and all of these things. Come and tell us why. And if you're a Christian, come and tell us why Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Yeah, We're yeah. giving you a platform, mashallah. Yeah. So come and do it, man. Don't hide in the chat. Come and see us. He oh, just yeah. a trini. What kind of hat is that? Oh, yeah. my favorite hat, actually. Yeah, he just oh, trini yeah. is uh, becoming a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, a naughty boy. There, he's sort of advertising our brother, um, brother Naveed's channel, SC Dawa, another another great channel, mashallah. Only second to EF Dawa, mashallah. You know, it's a Indeed. fantastic channel, Indeed. alhamdulillah. You know, sorry, no, sorry, I, sorry, 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 say that again. <laughs> okay. Subhanallah. All right. Well, shall we get the first guest on? We've got a couple of guests on. Uh, Yusuf, is that Yusuf? Yusuf, yes. Come and tell us why Islam is true, mate. <laughs> Yusuf, are you Muslim? Hello. Hi there, Yusuf. Yusuf, are you yes. Muslim? Yes. Uh, I, I just here to say, guys, I'm I'm very happy that I can speak with you. I'm from Morocco. Awesome. And now I, I live in uh, in France, but I have learned from you a lot of things, guys. I really in, enforce my my belief in Islam because of you, because uh, especially the way who you explain that uh, the proof that God exists uh, certainly that uh, that give me uh, a big certainty about Islam. And I want just to thank you guys uh, for all what you do. And may Allah bring us, uh, make me uh, also like you and uh, expand the, the beauty of uh, the, the da'wah of Islam. I mean, I mean brother, may Allah inshallah make you better than us because uh, we, we are lacking in many ways, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for your kind comments, uh, brother Yusuf. Uh, uh, just remember us in your dua and your prayers, inshallah. This is, uh, this is all that we uh, seek from our brothers and sisters that, mashallah, tune in. Jazakallah khair. Salaam alaikum, brother. Barakallah alaikum. So just me give you that statistic, right? So, so the chances of uh, random mutation not producing a protein is 10 to the power of 77, right? And to put that in perspective, uh, there's only 10 to the power of 65 atoms in our galaxy. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, this so, is what, when, when Allah says, Hamza, that Allah will show them from their fur from the furthest horizons and from within their selves. What does that mean? Furthest horizons Allah. and from within themselves. So when you look at the universe, when you look at the expanse, 
and the fine tuning, you know, the infinitesimally small uh, uh, values that are necessary, you know, precise values that are necessary for the universe to even exist, for us to even have a chance to exist, uh, that it all points to not randomness, but it points to something that measured those things in those infinitesimally small values. It had to be made. And the alternative is to believe, literally, when they say fairies and unicorns, I mean, you're believing in fairies and unicorns with fireworks flying out of their horns. I mean, you're believing in the most absurd uh, uh, values and chances that, I mean, so for example, Hamza, did you know, mathematically, it is possible for me to walk through a wall. Mathematically, on balance of probability, the, the probability is incredibly small because all of my atoms would have to be in perfect, perfect uh, unison, perfect link to the atoms in the wall. And potentially there is a very, very small, infinitesimally small chance of me walking through the wall, right? Wow. But, but if I was running at the wall, nobody's going to be sitting there thinking, let me see if he makes it through. Because they know that the chance of that happening is so infinitesimally small that I'm probably going to end up with a very nasty headache at the very least afterwards, right? And probably a few bruises and cuts. Now, when you look at the universe coming into existence simply by chance, you're talking about maybe tens, if not hundreds of people simultaneously all running at the wall and somehow magically on that very small prob probability just making it through the wall unscathed. You wouldn't I, don't know how, I don't know how atheists get away with that. I was watching, you know, I was watching as well today, Mohamed Ijab reacting to Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Ricky Gervais says, yeah, I don't believe in anything outside of science and nature. Yeah. He doesn't realize what he's saying there. He doesn't believe in mathematics. Yeah, yeah. Because mathematics is not within science. It's outside yeah. of science. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think half the problem is they, they get away with this so much because people don't realize what they're saying is yeah. stupid. Yeah. And that's why they keep regurgitating it. You know, I was watching it and everyone's like, oh, Ricky Gervais, uh, what are you talking about, yeah. about, mate? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's, Hamza, you have to, you know, the, one of the mistakes that they make is that they take everything humorously, right? Like they joke along with it. Because he's a comedian, they, yeah. they laugh along with it because he's mocking, you know, believers, right? But at the end of the day, he's not a philosopher. He's not a scientist, right? Yes, mockery amuses you. We get that. But that's not an argument or an evidence for your claim. And one does not replace the other. So, yeah. I mean, every, everything points towards a creator. So, when science points towards a creator. A about the universe, when they looked at the universe, initially they thought it was just a static universe. It wasn't growing. It wasn't expanding. Uh, it didn't have a beginning. It just was there. That was just a brute fact, a hard fact. It was just there. Okay. Now, they were comfortable with that because then you could argue that, okay, it's just a brute fact that this universe just exists. We don't know why, but it just exists. Now, when they looked at the red shift and they looked at the expansion of the universe and they realized actually it's expanding, therefore, if you, if you contract it, if you take it back enough, it, it goes to one singularity, one point, so it has a beginning. Now, what does that point to? It points to something now outside of the universe that is responsible for the universe coming into existence. When they look at, for example, the, as you mentioned, the fine tuning of the universe, uh, the law of gravity, the cosmological constant, uh, the, 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 the forces, the nuclear forces for neutrons and protons and how they're held together. When you look at any of these things, the, the, the values are so precise that you've got hundreds of decimal places. You know, hundreds and hundreds. So what does that point to? It doesn't point to random. And if it's not random, then it's coming from something that has uh -huh. measured out those precisions. And that precision that's been measured out can come from only something that's way beyond human capacity, human understanding, and even human comprehension. And that is what we say is, is God Almighty. Shall we yeah. get the, the first guess on, boys, or do you want to add anything to that? They all look like Muslims. They yeah, do. But I think we should have Jordan on first, I think. Yeah, bring Jordan on first. Who? Jordan. Jordan. Where's Jordan? I don't see a Jordan here. Uh, there he is, Jordan. There he is. Oh, okay. Mehmet, how are you doing? Jordan. Brother Mehmet? Uh, there he is, Jordan. Oh, okay.
Okay, we can't. Let's get uh, Khorasan. Khorasan Warrior, are you Muslim? Hello. Can you Hi hear there. Me? Are you Muslim? Yes, Khorasan. Are you Muslim? Yeah. Actually, I have one question. Uh, Brother, if you don't mind, this stream is actually for non Muslims. This question and is it's up, about. Uh, uh, the question is uh, from a non Muslim, actually. He's okay. my colleague. He's working with. He he's working with me in the company, so like okay. he's asking me this question a lot of times. Uh, the question is like, uh, uh, there is a verse in the Quran actually I forget, but like. Can, can um, I just stop? Can I just stop our friend? This is not Dawa Clinic, and this is not the floor is yours. Uh, Hamza, you know what it is. I know you're absolutely right, but because he said it's a question. No, we got me, John there. We got a guy called John. Actually, actually. Actually, this is my third time coming to this. Uh, yeah, but you're screen. coming to the wrong screens, my friend. Brother, if I'm you don't sure. mind, brother, if you don't mind, if you if you can come I... on to Dawa Clinic, or or I... if you email if you email us, uh, then one of us Sorry. will respond. I will take only five minutes, not more than that. No, we don't take one minute, mate. Brother, Sorry, brother, what, it, what it is is because we have a certain theme for a for John. a for a yeah. yeah, whatever. Okay, John. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Right. What do you believe? I'm skeptical. Oh, I'm going to be honest. I'm skeptical right now. I just believe in Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. Why do you believe that? Are you mocking my voice or something? No. Are you sure? Yeah. I think you are, man. No. This is the way of your prophet. Well, why do you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior? It says it in the Bible. Why do you believe what the Bible says? Uh, okay. John 17. Verse. Why do you believe what the Bible says? Because the Bible makes prophecies. What prophecies? Says, what prophecies? What uh, prophecies? It makes a prophecy that many people will become evil near the end of times. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, people are not evil in the time of uh, Jesus, no? Not as much. <laughs> Is that a prophecy? Which prophecy is that? Tell me what that is. What prophecy are you referring to? Uh, it's in Philippians. And that's why you're a Christian, because you believe people will become evil in the end of times. This is one example. Huh? Give, give us something a this bit more solid example. than that. You got something more solid than that? The creation of uh, the state of Israel. The Bible says the Jews will return. Okay, the... Jews don't believe they should have a state. They should remain stateless. Oh, this only some, this, is, this is some Jews only, not many Jews. No, the Jews who believe in the Bible, not Israeli Zionist Jews. Yeah, I know. But the Jews that believe in the Bible, they don't believe the Bible says the Jews will have a homeland. Go on. What are the prophecies well, you got, man? One more else. The Jews, they took the land. So even if they don't believe it, they have it. No, it don't work that way. Because you said it's prophecy. Where's the prophesies? That the, where is the prophesies in the Bible that Jews will have that land? Yeah, Paul wrote about it as well. Paul is a huh? prophecy what? man. P for prophecy. John, <laughs> John, Paul made John, John, can you speak up? John, John, can you speak up? Because we can't really clearly hear you. If you speak right into the microphone, uh, it, 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 it'll be a lot clearer. I is, think. is this better? Much better. Well, I'm curious. What were you doing before? Pardon me? I'm curious, what were you doing before? What change did you make to sound better on the microphone? I just put the mic in my mouth. Yeah, that's a good start. Okay. So where was the mic before? In front of my mouth. Okay, well, anyway, John. Um, uh, it, you ain't John. got a clue what you're talking about, have you, John? I do, I do. <laughs> you ain't got a clue. You ain't got Why a not? clue. Why? Because you haven't got any Oh, which Bible. prophecy says the Jews will have the land? Which prophecy? Many, many, many places in the Bible. Like, uh, Give me Deuteronomy one place. 30, Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 5. What does it say? What does it say? It says about Moses, the land of Israel will be given back to them. Where does it say they'll have it forever? Well, it never says forever, but it says they will return to it. When? Well, Hamza... His point is correct. I mean, after Moses, the Jews lived in that land. So oh, why would it be a prophecy? Oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? 
He just pressure he just was out. applied. He just the Trinity uh, came no, to no, the I table. think he's, he, he dropped out. He does. When people talk about prophecies in the Bible, my, from my understanding, there were lots of prophecies that actually failed. So when Paul, for example, tells the disciples not to get married, don't do anything, the last day is upon us, basically. Uh, sell it or sell all your goods effectively because you know we're just it's going to happen jesus is coming back again uh, it was literally imminent right there and then in their in their at their time in their generation clearly that prophecy didn't come true right no uh, in any case the messiah archetype in the hebrew bible is a warlord someone who fights someone who dominates jesus did not fulfill that and so yeah. See, I see. I believe when a Christian comes to the table with prophecy as their evidence, I believe prophecy is against them. You know, you've, used, you've heard me use this before, isn't it? Cinderella's ugly sick sisters trying to squeeze their fat, podgy foot into the glass slipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Hamza, like, Hamza, we discovered. We discovered. Huh? We discovered. No, his mic is in his. <laughs> <laughs> So, so basically, um, the, like for example, Isaiah nine six, a, a child podgy. shall be born. And... I like the way you said fat podgy. <laughs> like... Yeah, no, no, but that's what I'm saying. Imagine in it, I'm trying to squeeze it, and yeah, it's mine. It fits me. It fits me. I'm trying to, no, I don't love. And so, what the Christian does, they'll take the um, the 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 prophecy. They'll take a piece of it and try to match it to Jesus, and ignore everything else. Yeah. So you've got you've got prophecies in the in the uh, Old Testament they try to apply that don't fit, even like Isaiah fifty three, which they love. But then Jesus is supposed to be an ugly man, and he shall have children, and all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really add up. Then you've got prophecy, which are failed prophecy. So you've got the failed prophecy of um, where Jesus says, "You shall be judging standing. You here today will stand here judging with me when when I return." Kind of thing. Ooh, You'll see yeah. my return. I failed. It's failed. Yeah. And then yeah. you got the prophecy that if it is true, it, it collapses the conditions of atonement. Because if the prophecy of the third temple being rebuilt and animal sacrifice is going to recommence, what? What happened to atonement? So the problem they've got is prophecy is against the Christian. Prophecies in the Old Testament don't fit. Prophecies in the uh, in Ezekiel, um, if they come true collapse one of the doctrines of christianity and then you've got one prophecy that has completely failed so either jesus lied so he's a sinner or it's a failed prophecy or he didn't say those words or whatever it may be prophecy cannot be just you cannot come on here as a christian and claim prophecy is your evidence for jesus to be your lord and savior you just cannot do it you're in the wrong place if you think you can do that so so one of the strange things with prophecies in in the bible is when you read the Old Testament and then you see the New Testament author quoting it, right, people fail to realize that there is an option here for a person to have read the Old Testament prophecy and then write a story claiming that it is fulfilled. Just because you claim that you believe it was fulfilled does not mean that it actually was fulfilled. Many people wrote things that attributed them to Christ Jesus, which he did not see or do. And secondly, here's my challenge to Christians. Almost every time that you find an Old Testament quotation in the New Testament, there's a change to it. I'm sorry, but if you have to change it, then it isn't a prophecy to begin with. Yeah. Exactly. And even when even when Matthew tries to act all high and mighty and he keeps referring to Old Testament prophecy, he just butchers them. He just takes them out of context and gives them new meaning that they... If you go to the original, it's like, it didn't say that. It doesn't mean that. Yeah. So, and even, you know, sometimes he even makes up prophecy. So anyway, mm -hmm. so Christians, if you think you're going to come on here as prophecy as your witness, <laughs> wrong place. Bring, uh, bring, think, 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 bring, think, your, bring your Bible as a reliable source of information. Maybe that'll yeah. help you. I think the other problem that you have is that, in, uh, <coughs> in Jazz, and Hamza, that a lot of the biblical texts, the earliest, some of the texts that we find, uh, the prophecies date back hundreds of years sometimes after the prophecies have actually occurred so they've been they've been actually filled in afterwards uh somebody's gone back and changed things just to make it look like the prophecy was actually fulfilled so i think you've got to be very careful about things like that bring on jordan bring on jordan okay let's see brother mehmet salam alaikum jordan you gotta mute your youtube stream buddy Jordan, we can't hear you. Speak up. He probably doesn't even know you're talking to him. Yes, we yeah, can. Yes, yeah, we can. Yes, Jordan. Yes, we no, can. Listen, listen, Jordan. All right, good. How are you guys doing? You all right? We're all right. How are you doing? 
I've got a question for you guys. Um, might be a bit of a curveball. I know today's a little bit of a uh, non-religious, no, well, non-Muslim night. So I'll give you a question as a curveball. <laughs> In terms of like you guys debating all the times with Christians um, and different faiths, why do you why why is there always a constant thing to disprove each other when in reality 80% of the things that you everyone believes in is the same? What there's a good, there's a good reason for that, man. The question is why do you constantly try and disprove people from other religions about their Mem faiths? Mehmet, there's a good reason. Mehmet, there's a good reason for that. It's pretty much the same. Okay, Mehmet, there's a good reason for that. Um, when your brother and sister in humanity is doing something that could potentially cause them harm, um, and in fact, in your in your worldview and your religious uh, doctrine, can cause them harm, out of empathy, you should actually tell your brother and sister that you're going astray, just as you would tell somebody if they were if they wanted to get to say central London and they started to drive up the A12 going in the opposite direction, uh, out, of, uh, out of love and care for, for your brother and sister and humanity, you would say, excuse me, brother, you're going the wrong way. You're going to get lost if you go that way. You want to be heading in the other direction. So when our brothers and sisters uh, who are Christians, who believe in Jesus as being God, and in Islam we believe that associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest sin of all, and in fact, it's a sin that would put a person into hellfire unless they repent before they die, then it is our duty to tell our brother and sister. It's not about getting one over. It's not about, uh, you know, humiliating somebody or just winning an argument for the sake of arguing. But you want to tell your brother and sister that, brother, you're going astray. If you believe these things, this is wrong. This will hurt you. This will damage you. This will harm you. And so as a consequence... This is why we tell our brothers and sisters in Christianity that, look, you're going astray. You're doing something that's very, very wrong. And in fact, in Islam, this is something that would condemn a person uh, potentially to hellfire if they don't repent uh, before they die. And now, in, in, surprisingly uh, uh, and interestingly, our Christian friends say exactly the same thing to us because they say, look, if you don't believe in Jesus as God and the Holy Ghost as God, if you don't believe in the Trinity and you don't believe in the crucifixion, uh, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to be going to paradise. So we advise one another. And what Allah says in the Quran is very interesting. Allah says, if you speak the truth, provide your evidence. So when a Christian comes to me and they say, look, you're going astray. I say, OK, give me the evidence that you have to show me that I'm going astray. Similarly, uh, as a Muslim, I would uh, I could be asked for evidence as well. And I would give that evidence as to why. For example, the Bible is not trustable and uh, uh, the Quran is trustable, for example. So, so th this is out of empathy for our brothers and sisters. Yeah, just quickly to add on here, uh, Brother uh, Abbas, um, I don't agree with this claim that 80% of what we believe is the yeah. same. Rather, I think that this is a false claim to begin with, right? Are there <laughs> themes in common, like does a God exist? Yeah, but their God and our God are two different gods entirely. Here's what we can see. Islam makes an exclusive claim to the truth. We don't say that Islam is here to cohere with Christianity or Judaism or any other ideology. In the Quran, Allah directly says that the only deen acceptable to him is Islam. Full stop. So on this basis, we say it's not to prove other people wrong, but rather it's to demonstrate that their belief is incorrect and that we have the true belief and this is what we call them to. This is why it's called that word, because we invite people to adopt our beliefs and our understanding, our book, our prophet, our akhidah. This is simply what it is. It doesn't matter that there might be some themes in common like prophets and scriptures, etc. But we do not believe the same things. At the end of the day, according to the second law of logic, the law of non-contradiction, two opposing things cannot be mutually true at the same time rather, sorry, simultaneously true at the same time. One has to be wrong, one has to be right, and we say that Islam is the right option. No, I get, I get where you're coming from, but I don't think they necessarily oppose each other. I they think do. They're quite... they do. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. I, see, I, I think you need to understand a few things. No, 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 I, no, I understand the 
the actual structure of it in the sense no no no, no 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 i'm going to show you how they directly oppose each other okay okay what saves you in christianity will condemn you in islam what saves you in islam will condemn you in christianity that's it if you believe Jesus died for your sins, that will condemn you in Islam. If you believe Muhammad is the final prophet and Jesus is not the son of God, that will condemn you in Christianity. They can't, they're mutually exclusive. They can't both be true. They cannot both be true. Okay. And obviously the atheist believing in nothing cannot also be true as well as God existing. So now we've got three beliefs that can't be tr all true at the same time. And then we've got Hindus with Hanuman and monkey army. So that can't also be true at the same time. Then you have the Sikhs with their flex. That can't be true at the same time. Jews with their ethno religion. They reject Jesus as a prophet of God. Forget anything else. So that can't be true at the same time. Nothing can be reconciled. It can't be. But then the thing is, we have the absolute truth, which means there can only be one reality. So if Islam is true, everything else is false by default. And so if we see people in other religions who are passionate about those things, I want to try to understand why are they so passionate about it? Because I know they ain't got a leg to stand on and that this is their salvation we're talking about. This ain't a joke. We're talking about eternity here. We're talking about death. We're talking about the grave. We're talking about hellfire. We're talking about paradise. Yeah, and I don't leave my fellow man to wander in blindness because they happen to be born into the wrong household or the wrong country or the wrong culture. So we, we, we believe what we have is the truth and we present the truth. Other people have their what they believe is the truth. So our truths are going to combat one another. We'll demolish whatever comes against Islam, like we do here, like we do on the history streams, like we do in the arena. Nothing is, No one's come on any of our channels so far and challenged anything we've had to say. Atheists have come, Christians have come, Islamophobes have come, Hindus have come, all gone away with a tail between the legs. What does that tell you? Islam is the truth. Take care, Mehmet. Mehmet, before you go, Mehmet, before you go, can you clarify? Are you Muslim? Do you identify as Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Brother, my advice is genuinely watch some streams on Akida, read a book on Akida, and then engage with us on this, inshallah. Also, brother Mehmet, just before you go, I'm going to just read to you chapter 103 in the Quran. Allah says, Wal as inna linsana lafi husr. Which basically means by the passage of time, surely humanity is in grave loss. Except for except for who have faith, do good and urge each other to have truth. Uh, urge each other to the truth, sorry. And urge each other to perseverance. In other words, sabr, patience. Now, what that means is that the Quran is directly telling us that we have to urge each other to the truth. And this is incumbent upon every believer. Every believer has to encourage other people, human beings, to the truth. And if we do not do that, Brother Mehmet, we are told that on the day of judgment, we will be questioned as to why we didn't do it. So this is something that Allah has instructed us to do, which is to encourage humanity to the truth, to the right way. Because when you, inshallah, encourage somebody and they come into Islam and they accept Islam, not only does their life change, but their eternity changes and their generations that come after them potentially all change as well. And it gives them a chance, inshallah, to enter Jannah and to paradise. So this is something that's incumbent upon us, brother, all of us believers. We have to do it nicely. We have to do it with compassion. We have to do it in a way that that, that um, resembles what dawah is, which is to invite somebody. You don't invite somebody to your house for a meal or you know, for some samosas and a cup of tea or whatever in a harsh way. You do it with kindness. But if somebody is being obnoxious, they're being very, very harsh, they're being very rude, sometimes you, you have to be a little bit abrasive when you, when you deal with things like that. But generally speaking, we do it with kindness, we do it nicely with empathy. Does that answer your question, Brother Mehmet? It does. It does answer my question. Right. Uh, you have a lovely evening, Brother Mehmet. And you. join us on the join us on the, um, the Dawa Clinic to ask us more questions in relation to dawa what is a good way to do dawa or whatever but as brother ijaz mentioned uh basic courses on aqidah are very very important to learn 
a step by step. And if you email us, maybe we can recommend um, some of those courses for you, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much. All right, brother. Asalaamu Alaikum. Well, it's all I'm saying, Mamet. Uh, right. Brothers and sisters, please to remind you, it is a non-Muslim stream. Brother Mehmet is obviously, um, you know, still asking certain questions that are very, very, uh, let's say, aqidah based. And we don't want him to perhaps not get the right answers. But generally speaking, please, let's keep it as a non-Muslim stream. Uh, uh, it's about perfect storm is about somebody coming on, explaining to us their belief and then us challenging their belief. We can't do that if you're Muslim because astaghfirullah that would be kufr <laughs> to start challenging Islam. So please, uh, it's a non-Muslim stream. Uh, please respect that. Jazakallah uh, khair. Oh. Matthew? It's not Matthew. Hey, how goes it's, it? not, it's not Matthew. Is it Matthew? No. Yep. No, it's not. That's not your name, Matthew. Your name is Matthew. No, this this is a book chapter number. I know it is. Yeah, but br brother, is your name? Uh, are you a Muslim? No. Are you Muslim, brother? No. Okay, can you tell us what you believe and and why you believe it? I believe Christianity. And what do you why? believe about Christianity? <laughs> I believe that just before we continue, God, so just before God, we continue, do you understand the nature of this stream? Can you repeat that? Do you understand the nature of this stream? What you're here to do? Uh, aren't you guys going to challenge my religion? Yes, we are. So you're a Christian, yeah? Which type okay. of Christian? Uh, Hamza, I'm going to remove uh, Matthew because I can barely hear Matthew. Hardly uh, anything coming through at all. Um, and, and it's like he's not even talking into the microphone, which is a little bit painful to to, to, to listen to. Um, Stu, I think you're struggling with internet. So let's get uh, Rob on. Rob, how are you doing? Salam alaikum, guys. How it's not salam wa 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 alaykum. It's, it's a salam wa alaykum. I, I think he's just talking in tongues. Don't worry about him. Okay, fair mm. enough. Yeah, but Rob, okay. try to be a bit more so, respectful and not butcher our um, greeting as you butcher everything else, yeah? Try to be a bit more respectful, so I, please. I've been watching the stream and... Um, but Rob, do you agree to be you... a bit more... Res Rob, one second. Do you agree not to use that greeting unless you use it properly the next time? Uh, yeah, don't worry, no problem, no problem. No, it worries uh, I mean, me I... because that's a prayer in my faith. That's actually a prayer. May the peace of God be upon you. And uh, when you make a mockery of a prayer, I'm going to be harsh with you. So, Rob, no, do you no, agree? no, no, it no. Just, you it just, it just, it just, it I'm just, I'm just being jovial. I'm just being jovial. That's all. It's not jovial. I'm, to I'm, me. I'm, I'm, I'm extending. I'm, I'm extending what is a very nice way of greeting He's taking the piss so please don't think we're stupid anyway come and defend your religion now, hamza 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 nobody nobody is la, 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 just come and no, listen, I'm into your waffle let's come and defend your religion okay so let's get to the crunch now as a christian i you know i can honestly say as a christian we do not believe that Mary is a deity or a god. And I can also say the same All right, for Rob, 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 Rob. Why are you telling us what you don't believe? Tell us what you do believe. No, no, I'm telling you what we believe. What, no, you're telling we, us what you don't believe. Tell us what you do believe. We don't believe that Mary I'm is what a you god. don't believe. You're here to defend what you do believe. So tell us what you do believe and we'll refute that. Don't come on, tell us what you don't believe. How are we supposed to refute things you don't believe? We don't care about things you don't believe. We care about things you, you believe in. Am I here to tell you what I believe or not? Yeah. You're here to tell us what you believe, <laughs> not what you don't believe. Because, you know, Rob, if, if, you you if you tell us, Rob, all the things that you don't believe, then, I mean, that could take all, an eternity, couldn't it? And really? How are you going to refute no, something no, no. you don't believe in? I've, I've you, tried... What, I've, 
I, I'm trying to actually get yeah, we know it what out you're trying to, of Rob, what, Rob, what we do. We know what you're in. trying to do, and unfortunately, it ain't going to fly. Guys, are you going to give me a chance to actually? Are you going to give me a chance? If you speak on topic and your question is Rob, it's very very simple. You're here to tell us what you do believe is true and why, and then we'll smash it to bits, right? You're not here to tell us yeah, what you, you don't believe. You is won't true. even let me talk. You won't even let well, me stop talk. Stop telling us what you don't believe in and tell us what you do believe in. This is what I'm trying to do. All right, go ahead, Rob. I tell you, Rob. Go, go and sort yourself out. Stu McMahon's here. Wow, Stu McMahon looking beefy. Wow, wow. Okay. All right, Stu. I'm Stu. You got our entire screen. <laughs> Abbas, what are you, are you painting your... What are you... It's just oh. a pen. So, <laughs> Stu, Stu, Stu. One of those pens that you can rub out with the with the rubber at the end. So mm -hmm. I like this pen. Anyway, Stu, him? Stu yeah, welcome him. to the stream, Stu. Uh, Stu, we can't hear you. Your microphone probably is not working. Can you try to sort that out? All right, Rob, we'll get you back on with Stu. How's that? Rob, why wow. don't you tell us Rob, why don't you tell us what you believe so we can have a nice discussion? Because otherwise it gets a little bit tedious, uh, Rob. Just tell us what you believe. Okay. So I'll, are you gonna let me talk now? We, we no. are gonna let you talk, but you've got to be uh, but you've got to be respectful, Rob, because if I'm, you just start if you start telling us things that you don't believe. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's not supposed yeah, to yeah, be. Just kick him off. Just kick him off straight. It's not the theme. It's not the theme of the of the perfect storm. The perfect storm is that you come on, you say what you believe and perhaps reasons why you believe it, and we challenge those reasons. And that's what this particular stream is about, Rob. So, you know, I know. I, I, Abbas, Abbas, that's exactly what I'm trying to trying to. All right, Express. you know what? Let's just humor Rob. Rob, okay, go for it. Go Abbas, on, I can tell you his argument. I know, I know, I know. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know too. I know okay. too. I know too. Okay. There is okay. the truth. It's okay. It's okay. Go on, Rob. So, make your argument then. Come on. The majority of what I believe as a Christian and Catholics, and that makes up the majority of Christianity. Uh, that we don't believe that oh, Mary God. is a deity or a god. Okay. So, you know, so okay. what? You may, do you believe, do you believe you Hanuman may... is a god of the monkey army? <laughs> Darren, why are you throwing red herrings in again? Well, you're throwing in things you don't believe in. Let's see what else you don't believe in. Do you believe in Zeus? Or you don't believe in Zeus? Only as a cartoon character. Right. So tell us what you do believe in. Last chance. Hang on. Would you would you give me a chance to? We no. just did. We I'm just did. I'm give you a chance, mate. I know. I know his argument. What he's trying to infer. He's basically saying we 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 don't believe in Mary as a god. Yeah, and but that's Quran, irrelevant to this stream. I know, and and then he and then he's going to say that the Quran says about. He's, he's, he's trying to circumnavigate the exactly. stream. Exactly, and then he's going to say the Quran says the Quran argues that, uh, and of course there were people in history that did believe in Mary uh, as a still deity. Do. There do. are people that still do believe in Mary as a deity. Um, I, I, and not only that, but the Quran is beautiful because the words that the Quran uses about the Trinity and the way that Allah navigates those words is so beautiful because it encompasses all different types of Trinity. It doesn't limit it to one type of Trinity. It, it actually encompasses any type of Trinity. And that's the beauty of the Quran, that it doesn't make it so specific that it doesn't actually fit. It fits everywhere. And that's the problem that you have, Rob, that in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran very clearly that it's beyond the majesty of your Lord to beget a child. And this for a person who can think about these things carefully should be enough. It should be enough that Allah says it is beyond the majesty of your Lord to beget children, to have children. This is something, a biological function of, of living things that Allah has instilled and installed in us. And Allah does not need to do these things. So, you know, don't, please don't, just tell us what you believe and we can have a discussion, but don't go into this round the houses nonsense. Um, Falcon X, how are you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. <laughs> Uh, I, take you? You, I take you, I take you, Muslim brother. <laughs> yes, Alhamdulillah. I'm from Saudi Arabia. 
okay, and, uh, I'm watching you since 2015 and uh, I really like uh, uh, Brother Hamza and Brother Abbas for the interacting with the Hyde Park. Uh, so, Allah khair and uh, may Allah bless you all. Thank you. Jazakallah um, for your kind comments, brother. Uh, and remember us in your dua, inshallah. So, brothers and sisters, uh, as, I, as we've mentioned many times, uh, the perfect storm is about you coming on, telling us what you believe. And, you know, we'll put it through the storm. We'll ask you questions as to why you believe it. And we'll have a nice discussion about it. Um, Christians are welcome. Atheists are welcome. Or if you're a Hindu or a Sikh Hindu, or anything Sikhs. else. Whatever you want to believe, come and bring anyone, it to the Anyone table. at all, you're, you're welcome to come onto the stream and we'll we'll have a nice discussion about, about why you believe and what you believe. Why are they so afraid? I'm, I'm curious about something, which is they speak so much in the comments. I mean, we give them the opportunity to come, defend your belief, critique our critique of your belief. This is the time and the place. Not while Hamza is chilling in his shop on TikTok. Not while Abbas is having conversations. The time is now. This is the opportunity. This is it. We're giving you a platform. 1,300 of people watching. Tell us why Christianity is true. Tell us, you know, you, some, you might get some Muslim scratch in the head thinking, ooh, that, that, that sounds all right. You know what I mean? Atheists, come and tell us why we're stupid worshipping a sky wizard. Come and tell us. Where are you all? You, that, that, there's no way there's 1,388 Muslims watching and there's no atheists or Christians there. Why are you all afraid? Yeah, I think one of the one of the one of the things that I've noticed um, is that um, generally, if the uh, if the arguments are, are very very strong, people are like very they're, they're very deterred. They're deterred to sort of come on because they think, oh, they're not going to get a chance. But we will give you a chance. We'll give we'll give you a chance to come on to make your case, and we'll have a good interaction with you. So no need to be no need to be scared of us. We're very cuddly and uh, friendly uh, people. You call um, down the thunder and here it comes. Here we go. So, <laughs> no, no, uh, he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. One God, are you Muslim? Muslim. One God? Abbas, just click the three little digits above his name. I the, know, I know. It's uh, Ju'ad. <laughs> you call down the thunder and here it is. Hey, how you doing? How you guys doing, man? Long time no see. We're doing very, very well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, glory to Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Um, so I know how the, the how to, to proceed. Uh, I believe um, the triune God is the only uh, God that can be demonstrated logically to be the creator. Since um, he... Uh, through the revelation of scripture, he reveals that he uh, enters creation, um, engages with creation, and interacts with creation. So basically, um, the revelation of scripture uh, um, explains how an eternal God is able to enter creation for him to create. Because unless your God enters creation, it's impossible for him to create. So how would you engage with that? So did you did you just say unless God enters creation, it's impossible for Him to impossible. create? Why, why do you believe that? Uh, well, you would have to show a tangible way of Him uh, of how He created. If He doesn't, well, didn't creation, He create when there was no creation? No. So how? Do, what? No. Huh? So, so, has, said, has creation always existed? No, he had to enter creation for him to create. No, no, as creation or it always existed. No, no. So what was before creation? God and uh, his eternal uh, reality. Right. So you're saying God couldn't create creation unless he was in creation, but creation didn't exist. No, God, uh, according to our understanding, God pierced the time. Uh, I'm sorry. He pierced the, 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 the veil of eternity. And as he pierced it, he entered time and space. Uh, he entered creation. Uh, as he pierced it, he created time and space. So as okay. he was let me just, just let me just roll you back again a second. Sorry. Go ahead. Before there was no creation, what existed? Only God. Only God. And his eternal reality. Right. Only God. Right. And his eternal reality. What does that mean? Uh, according to Isaiah fifty-seven fifteen, he inhabits 
eternity so he inhabits i don't know what your understanding is but well, well you know you're just uh, i said only god existed and you went and his ex eternal reality what well, I, I don't know why you added that there's no need to add that so there's only god somewhere so there's only god and how did he create he got out, out of his uh his eternal reality he punctured he out of his eternal he, exactly. he, got out of, he got out of eternal reality and he came into time and space how'd you get out of eternal reality uh he humbled himself as for Psalms 113 6 and he entered time and space as he no, punctured but, the veil where, where did time and space come from as he punctured the the, the veil of eternity uh, he inhabits eternity he punctured that veil and as he punctured time and space was created so we can explain how time and space was created you can't because according to your beliefs okay you explain how time and space um, please don't say uh, God punched the veil. How do you believe time and space was invented? That's what he did. Created. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it says it in uh, uh, Genesis one. In the beginning was the the heavens and earth created, and you compare that to Psalms. Uh, uh, no, First Samuel twenty two verse ten. It says that uh, he bows the heavens or punctures the veil of eternity. So uh, so he punctures the veil. As soon as he punctures, time and space is created simultaneously. That is how we explain creation how can you explain do, do you believe do you believe god can create from nothing of course he can he can of course so he doesn't need to punch or anything no he has to have a tangible effect like according to you uh, he spoke but he spoke to himself forget he forget was, what we believe forget okay, what we so, believe it's not about what so we believe the word the word of god the word of god actually had a tangible effect so he punctured I, I think, the I think, I think um i think hamza th th there is something that we're missing here because you know okay. this this term of god needs initially that's the biggest problem you have because need is something that God has no need for. God has no needs. He doesn't need to do anything because need is something that is necessary for something to happen. And God is not bound by any need. He simply wills something into being and it comes into existence. This is our God. This is how we describe Allah. He is without needs. He is without the need of anything. He doesn't need to do something in order to be able to create. Allah simply wills it into existence and it comes into existence. So so, so that creation was done in, in eternity. So that would mean that creation is eternal as well. That's your pro that's the problem that you just presented right now. No, that's, that's, not, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. So, I didn't so, say so that. Explain to me. So, so explain to me if he willed it from eternity and he did not create time and space. Then it was created in eternity. That's what you but just listen, said. The, the problem, <laughs> the problem that you said. You, 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 you that, that's not okay, what right. I said. That's not what I said. Repeat it. Our our belief in Allah okay. is that Allah decided when He wished to create this universe, okay, which is the only universe that we know of, because our knowledge and our understanding and everything that we have is limited to our existence, which okay. is this universe. What Allah may have created before eternally created we don't know okay but our reality allah specifically chose that at a specific time that he was going to create it but allah does not need to enter into something or to pierce something uh do something physical as it were or enter into creation to create allah simply wills something to come into existence and it comes into existence so you, just, you just repeated the same point that i just told you so basically the creation comes from eternity that's that's basically what you just said did I, Terry, did that? Let me have to be sensible here. What's it, Terry? Remember one thing about Terry. Remember one thing about Terry. One second. Remember one thing about Terry. He invents meanings for words. Yeah. Yeah. That nobody else uh, Terry, applied. Terry, uh, did I say to you, you, did you, I say, much. did I say to you that our universe was eternally created? Did I say that to you? No, but you said, this, this is the point I, I, I'm, I'm bringing to your attention. Our God had to puncture eternity, the veil, so he could enter creation. Time and space was created as soon as he punctured. So he creation comes outside so of So creation is outside of eternity. No, no, okay. Let me fi finalize Stop. my statement so you understand okay. that you don't say I'm going to ask you a question. Outside, it was outside okay. of the eternal reality. 
You're okay. telling me that he didn't do that. He didn't puncture okay. the veil of eternity. Okay. So he did it in eternity. So that okay. means creation is eternal. That's the point okay. I'm bringing to your Terry, let me just it's ask you a question. Oh, one second. Explain Terry, to me why let me, not. Let me, just, let me ask you a question, it's Terry. Happened. If God if God did not puncture the time and space, could he have still created? I didn't say that. The, the veil, the veil of eternity. If God Why, did what not, is this veil of eternity he's talking about? Yeah, let's 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 humor uh, him. Read Ter First Terry. Samuel twenty-two verse Ter ten. Why is telling me to read the Bible? Uh, Hamza, one but second. I'm giving Terry. you the definition. Ter 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 Terry, I don't know what the Bible says. Ha Hamza, just you one last question. question. You Hamza, one last question. question. Terry, Terry, if God did not puncture this veil, yes, could He still have created our reality? No. So, in other words, He had to do something. In order to be able to, so he has needs. God has no, needs. No, no, no. But uh, unless, unless, if he didn't do that, then you would have to say that it, creation is eternal because it's inside right. of eternity. No, that's nonsense. That's your no, view. No, it doesn't mean that. Uh, okay, so does, where, and, so, so uh, where, Hamza. So where, uh, it so does. Do you want to come in? Oh, sorry. What well, Abbas? You said that's nonsense. So what did you tell? You said it was willed in eternity. So if it was willed in eternity and it didn't. Time and space was not created, or, or or it was not done outside of eternity. Then you're saying creation is in eternity. It was done so in eternity. Just, I'm just trying to understand your parameters. That is your so problem. That let's is your imagine. Problem. Let's imagine this eternal veil. What is it like a balloon or something, or like a circle, uh, or what? Uh, act like a, when uh, you see a black hole. It's something similar to that. Well, so, it's not. It's not a black hole. Uh, I, I'm going according to scripture, and, and I'm the, you, uh, no, no, a black a hole is the opposite. A black hole is the opposite of what you, you say. You don't know what a black hole is. You don't know what a Do black hole is. Stop it. No. Oh, okay. The, a black the, hole the is theories. something. Theories. A, a, theories. a black hole is something that contains high entropy, which means um, it, yeah. nothing can. Good luck, um, good luck with that. <laughs> you tested oh, it. Oh, it's not. Does did a black hole not contain it? high entropy? Did Did you bring it in a lab and test it? What? No. You You didn't test it. How, how, how do you know specifically what it does? Or, what, or what, what, it what a black hole does? Do you know what a black hole does? I gave you an example to give you a visual. No, 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 Punching no, no. Punching of the veil. Have, have, you, test, have you tested a black hole? Uh, no, you're the one who says you know what it is. All right. Well, I've been reading this book, and these guys okay, kind of have done it. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, they, they tested it? Yeah. <laughs> Hamza, come on. People are watching. What do you mean? Stop. What do you mean, Hamza? Come on. It's science, they mate. They tested it. They tested a yeah, black hole. Yeah, they understand the nature of a black hole. <laughs> they tested it. I said test yes, it. Yes. They had theories. They didn't, they didn't test it. No, they have hypotheses. <laughs> of course. You don't see the thing. Okay. 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 Put this way. Put this way. Right. <laughs> Come on. They've got. They've got a hypothesis as to what a black hole is and what makes a black hole. Yes. And you've got your hypothesis. Theirs is based on years of research and testing and analysis, and yours is based on what? Samuel, uh, the, uh, the, the same, the same scientists that say we come from monkeys. No, no. Are you so tell me what a black hole is. Tell me what a black hole uh, is. No, don't divert. I want to. No, I'm not diverting. The point I brought. with what you said. No. Tell me what a black I hole is. I brought a visual. I, I, brought I a told visual. you what a black hole was according to science. You have a different understanding of what a black science? hole is. It's so tell theory. me what it is. If you say a black hole is, is science, uh, if you're saying that the no, no, no. is I'm the science, to you, then my monkeys, we come from monkeys is science. It's I'm science saying as well. to you this, Terry. You can't to them understanding what you of what a, Terry, my understanding of what a black hole is is based upon uh, the hypothesis of science on, on their research and what they've done, right? You reject that. It hasn't been tested. It hasn't you been reject tested. That's that. My point. You reject that. Yes. Uh, so what is your Under research? Understanding? Of a black what hole? is your research? Uh, of course, that, that's what I'm going to tell you. What is your uh, research? Going, uh, you said it three times. I'm going to re I'm going to answer. Thank Go you. On. Uh, I, I'm going to, uh, by scripture. What is so? Tell me what a black hole is. Tell me what a black hole is. According to scripture, according to scripture, is that the puncturing of the veil between eternity and time and space. That that's is what a black, black hole is. According to scripture, he bows the, the head. Scripture's wrong. Uh, okay, no problem. But he bows. The, the point is still uh, uh, valid. Is he created outside of his eternal reality? If your God created in eternity, you have two options. Either I knew there was a reason, right? I kicked you off Hamza's den, and the reason yeah, being yeah. is you just I make up the meanings for words and make up the meanings for objects, and then say scripture describes Hamza. it better than dictionaries. And Hamza, then even Hamza. when you bring scripture, you don't like that scripture. You want Hamza. your scripture that you've invented. Hamza, I have I have footage no, of you're a waste of time, Terry, on, on, on my channel. You're Nobody a waste of time. You. You're a waste of you, time, Hamza. mate. Even your supporters don't believe you. But the facts still Terry, remain. Terry, 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 you're a waste of time.
Yeah, he, he comes trying to get little snippets for his channel. Yeah. Can I just jump in here um, quickly? Yeah. yeah. So we believe that Allah exists outside of time and space. He is not a corporeal entity, nor is he a created entity. He's not had it. What we <clears> say <throat> is that he's atemporal and that his attributes um, have always existed with him. He, he didn't become the creator at some point in time. He always inherently had the ability to create. When he willed something to existence, he chooses for that thing to exist. That's simply what it is. So time, space, reality all came into existence and they would not exist if he had not allowed it to exist. Allah is called Al-Mudabbir, the planner, and uh, this is what he does. So for us, we do not say that Allah acts within time as if you know he exists within time and space. Rather it is, he always is all knowing, he is always all hearing, always all seeing, always all powerful. And there is never a time in which he gains these things. So, right. yeah. and, and, and this is what a black hole is for everybody watching who are willing to not use scripture as their uh, dictionary. Uh, black holes are points in space that are so dense they create deep gravity sinks. Beyond a certain region, not even light can escape the powerful tug of black hole's gravity. Such a burst flings stars mass out into space but leaves behind the stellar core. And the point about the, 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 black, the black hole is that it's high entropy, it's chaos. It's not organized. It's just chaos. Yeah. And, and this is what this is where going what we were saying earlier about fine tuning. Our universe could have been black holes without mm -hmm. the fine tuning yeah. because the gravitational forces, the uh, electromagnetic forces, the nuclear forces all had to be at a certain level to have what we've got. And at the same time, to go from a big bang to low entropy universe, which we have, that has to be explained as well. So coming on here, ignoring what the science, you know, has it been tested? Have I tested a black hole? Yeah, call me Book Rogers, mate. You know, it's just ridiculous. And then his explanation of a black hole is, is Samuel 16 or whatever. I mean, the thing is... Uh, it, it's, a, it's abysmal, man. I mean, really. I mean, the thing is that God needed to pierce the veil to be able to... He has to enter creation. I mean, has to. We don't say God has to do anything. Uh, you know, God is not doesn't need to enter creation to be able to create because God is limitless. God is all powerful, infinitely powerful, infinitely wise. So God doesn't need to do something in order to be able to do something. He simply wants to do it, desires to do it, wills it, and it comes into existence. Well, well Abbas, concept, yeah. that's the meaning of the word all powerful, that he has right. the power and no the need. authority and the ability to create yeah. without anything else to exist right. in it. God right. does not need inputs. He does not need material. He simply wills it and it exactly. exists. Full stop. The, 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 the type of thinking for that individual is there must be some kind of like thing that God draws from in order to create. We say that this makes God not all powerful and thus he's dependent upon his creation. So this will yeah. just make God dependent upon his creation and not right. very powerful. I, I, I just want to understand, was Terry saying that the black hole is, is this tear? I have no idea what Terry idea. was saying, other than that it was gibberish and like nonsense. So. But also I didn't understand the point because if you have to enter creation to be able to create, um, when there's no creation, what are you entering into? <laughs> And when you pierce the, the the veil of eternity, what's on the other side? Creation. And what? when there and when there was no veil, right? If there was no veil, how could you penetrate the veil? I mean, we believe that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is eternal. Allah is all powerful, all wise, and without any need, there is no need for Allah to do anything. He's limitless uh, and without boundaries. I mean, this right, is our concept. This guy up now. I think he's on the wrong stream. Who? Andrew Christ. Uh, Andrew definitely, Christ. definitely. He's wandered onto the wrong stream. I think he's um, struggling with his microphone, he was saying. He's always struggling with his bloody microphone. Andrew Christ, you muted. I think, I think he's in the back chat. I think he said that I'm, I'm uh, All right. still stuck. He's, wandered, he's wandered onto the wrong stream, I'm telling you. He's still struggling. William. William. Welcome to the stream. Oh. Hey, PA makes a return. Where you been, mate? You've been in prison. 
Uh, I'm pretty Gregory. sure Gregory's a Muslim. Gregory? Gregory, you need to unmute your mic. I think mic. Gregory said he had a, Muslim, uh, a non-Muslim friend that wanted to ask a question. Uh, is that what Gregory's saying? Well, no, he yeah. asked questions. Why do people keep thinking they come on to ask a question? Yeah, guys, this particular stream is for you to come on with your belief, and then we, we challenge your belief. I, I have mentioned it about seven or eight times already that this is not actually for... Uh, for Muslims uh, and uh, brother Furkan, I believe you're Muslim as well. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, yes, I am a Muslim. I'm from Pakistan. Tell us what you believe and why. I want to know why you're a Muslim. Yeah, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Are you Muslim? Yes. Why are you Muslim? I, I was born a Muslim. I was born a Muslim, but now uh -huh. I am not a Muslim just because I was born. I have studied, actually, studied okay, Islam. And okay. why, why do you believe Islam is true? Like I, I have a, sufficient reasons to believe. I have. Yeah. Why? Like, like the uh, there are many arguments. For example, the preservation of the Quran. Okay, How is the Quran preserved? And the, was the Quran preserved? Mm. Like it was preserved uh, by writing and orally. It has been orally transmitted, and we have changed going back to uh, Sahaba. Why, why, why uh, does why does that make Islam true? Islam? No, it, it, I was talking about the preservation of the Quran first. I know. Why did preservation of the Quran? No, no, Hamza, Hamza, I believe that he, no, he, okay. he uh, uh, for Khan, are you saying that you've left Islam? No, no, he's not saying that. He's not saying that. No, 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 he, no, no, no. He's not saying that. No, uh, he's, no, he's a Muslim, no, Alhamdulillah. No. What does president, why does no, preservation no, no, of the Quran make Islam true? No, no. First, I was uh, establishing that the Quran is preserved, and then uh, there are, uh, for example, certain challenges in the Quran, like Allah said in the Quran, Afala yata the Barular Quran. Like you would have found many contradictions in it. And when we try to find and like if we find any contradiction, then it means Quran is not from God according to Quran's own criteria. And uh, for example, there are also other challenges like Are there any Allah contradictions in Harry Potter? Some... Uh, Hamza, let's I'm teaching these Muslims a lesson. No, no, don't, don't. Brother Furkan. Uh, brother, yes. this particular stream is for non-Muslims and it's actually for us to challenge their beliefs. So, brother, if you don't mind, um, if you if you would like to come on to the stream to talk about uh, Dawa related issues, then uh, you need to come on to the Dawa clinic stream, uh, not this particular okay. stream, brother. Is that OK? OK, oh, no problem. Jazakallah khair for coming on. Asalaamu Alaikum. I think what it is sometimes people join the stream very late and they they miss the um uh the co the comments obviously they miss the the guidance that the we, title. Take, we give. It's in the title. I I know people sometimes overlook it and they don't. No, Maimuna, you misunderstood what he said. He said he was born Muslim, but that's not the reason he's Muslim. He became Muslim through his own intellectual investigation. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay. so I'm gonna I'm gonna test Muslims now as to why them any Muslim that comes on, I'm gonna find out why they're Muslim. Well, maybe we don't want to create any doubts, but let's see. Uh, Sammy, are you? Well, it's rather it's better that we introduce them to these types of questions in a safe space rather than someone who would not yeah. be able to help them understand their faith. Possibly, possibly, yeah. Um, Sammy, are you Muslim? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Why are you Muslim? I'm gonna ask a few questions about other things that have been asked. Uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, brother Sammy, if you don't mind, this is actually a stream for non-Muslims, and it's about us challenging their beliefs. So, if you don't mind, if you come onto the Dawa Clinic stream, then by all means you can ask us a question. If you need to ask us something urgently, please email us, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. But uh, please be respectful, guys. We we do keep saying this is not for Muslims. And then we get people coming on sometimes with a non-Muslim name uh, just to squeeze onto the stream. And it's just not being respectful. So all the Muslims want to come on now and tell us why they're Muslim. 
Yeah, subhanallah. Uh, Gregory. He said give him five minutes, one minute, of course. So he needs four more minutes. Okay, all right. I didn't I didn't read the uh, thing. Um, oh, Gregory is a Muslim. Yeah. Sorry? Muslim. Gregory is a Muslim. Is, is Gregory a Muslim? Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, we need to get Gregory off the back chat then, really. As a perfect storm, rinsed everybody. No one's a, no one's got a belief they think they can survive the storm. Well, but then Gary, oh, Gary. Stupid man, I want to see this guy, man. Stu. He better have that Mohican. Oh, come Mohawk. on, man. Mohawk, you mean. Mo yes, Mohican. Stu, Mohican. it might work better for you if you turn your camera, camera off. I don't know what that is. What is a Mohican? Mohican is where you have your hair. Mohican is where you have your hair. In the middle no, that's of a like mohawk. That. Yes, it's a mohican. mohawk. It's called a mohawk. It's called a mohican. No one calls it a mohican. In England, we call it a mohican. Yeah, yes, what what you in England, yes, in the bloody in the movie called Last of the Mohicans, where all the Indians had the bloody hair like that with uh, Kevin Costner. And we did invent the language, uh, Ijaz. So I think if we say yeah, mohican, please go back to your um, the, the we. So, sorry, I didn't know that you were <laughs> okay, dealing with the British yeah. Empire here, mate. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gregory so, is back. Stu is go. back. Superman's back with that with that flex. Stu, can you hear us? And Stu. he became a member as well. James, welcome to the stream. Uh, Philosophical atheist. Oh, Daniel Day Lewis. Sorry, my mistake. Okay. Stu, can you hear us, Stu? Stu, we can't hear you. Maybe your microphone or whatever else it might be. I do that in the shop. You know that, Ijaz? When what? customers ask me, are you Muslim? I go, yeah. And they go, I go, you Muslim? And they're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really, why? And they're like, they're a bit little Bengali. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I believe Muhammad is a messenger of God. Why? Oh, going to oh. break their hearts, Hamza. So I think we're 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 uh, struggling to get any guests on other than Muslims. <laughs> uh, so, Look, the doctor's uh, not even here in the running for the hills. I, I think know. there was a Ijaz is joining. I think well. Ijaz is. I think Ijaz. I you, hope not. You, By the way, the, the doctor is busy today. We didn't replace him. I'm just a substitute until the doctor um gets his time back. So I didn't replace him for the questions being asked. I can never yeah. replace Doctor Imran. Yeah, no, Alhamdulillah. I think the uh, doctor's got family commitments that he could not get away with. Um, so, Alhamdulillah. I'm going to be there. honest with you. I can't even see any Christians or atheists in the chat. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I think basically again, what's happened is that um, the, the, I, I think generally people are intimidated to come on because yeah, go they, fishing, guys. Go fishing, guys. Go in clubhouse. Get some Christians and atheists who reckon they can defend their beliefs. <laughs> Have you heard what Hamza's Den is doing? No. So basically, uh, we've created a Discord channel for oh. the Hamza's Den, um, okay. for the members of the channel and patrons. And basically, from there, we're going to send fishing expeditions to TikTok, to um, to um, Discord, sorry, to Clubhouse and all that. And we're going to fish for atheists and Christians. And I've told my people, just act like you can't answer their questions. <laughs> just, just give them confidence. Oh, God. Hamza, why did you have to in, uh, invite the non-Muslims? Because look, we've just got we've got a very esteemed uh, guest. No, I think you should have left, left him on. Uh, you should have left him on. I didn't kick <laughs> right. him. Did you kick we, him, Hamza? No, we, I didn't kick him. We, yeah, we, we, we had. Uh, there we go. Okay, hey, Paul, this Paul, Paul, Paul Anchor. Paul. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Paul. It's Paul. Hello. I miss you, Paul. Paul, I'm going to do a little Sherlock Holmes on you, Paul. I'm back. I I guess that you've done oh, some washing angry. today. Hold on. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we yeah. can. We Close can hear you. Yeah. Paul. Paul, I'm, Paul, I'm going to do so, some. Oh, well, I'm going to do some YouTube. Sherlock Holmes today, Paul. Uh, well, I suspect that you've done some washing today, Paul. You've done. You, <laughs> I'm a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do be washing. <laughs> now, washing don't it. tell me how I know, but you know these are the sort. Of... <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, yeah. I'm looking at what's in your wardrobe now as well. What's going on there? The how are you doing, Paul? Welcome look back too to closely. the stream. I look too closely. <laughs> okay. <Am> I... <laughs> 
I might have some illegal <laughs> things in there. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, man. <laughs> no, I thought control. I was just watching. How, how are you doing, Paul. you guys? Okay. We're doing well, very well, well, Brother Paul. So, Brother Paul, what do you believe and why do you believe it? And why have you not converted to Islam yet? <laughs> well, I believe in uh, Christianity. Yeah, yeah, I'm Christian. Did we demolish Trinitarian. that last time? Trinitarian. What? I don't think so. No. Uh, Paul, Trinitarian. Do you, Paul, do you believe... Can I ask you a question, Paul? Uh, do you believe that God needs to have a child to be sacrificed in order to forgive your sins? Does he need to do that? Or would he be able to just forgive you um, without having a child that is sacrificed? The way that he would have forgiven the followers of Moses, the same way he would have forgiven the followers of Abraham or Noah, right the way back up to Adam. God could have just, as he did, he forgave people who repented. Could he have simply continued with that formula or did he need to have this child 2,000 years ago in order to save you, to forgive you? <laughs> this child, I, I don't know how God can have a child in that. You know, how can, I, how can God have a child? <laughs> he doesn't know how God can have a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe you did. Say, if you say begotten son of God, it, that that sort of has a that has a, a an, an effect on us, doesn't it? And God has begotten a child, a a son. That's true. Yeah, that's true. My question is: Does God need to do that in order to forgive you or to save you? That's my question to you, brother. Well. Uh... I don't believe he can just forgive by just uh, saying uh, I forgive you and why doing, not and doing nothing else. Why not? Because of the uh, because of the offence. It's uh, All if right. God can I is. Can I read something to you? Yeah. One second. Where is it in Ezekiel? Um, you jazz. Like I want to read something to you. 18 or 23, I forget which chapter. I think it's, I think it's 18, 18, isn't it? Yeah. Just give me one second, uh, my mate Paul. I know, I know what, uh, I think I know where you're coming from. Oh, you know where I'm coming from, do you? What's that? Yeah, yeah, I think. What am I saying? Where am I coming from then? Educate me. Well, I think uh, the soul that sinneth it shall die, I think is... is no. I think that's, no, 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 no. That one. No, no, definitely no, no. not that one. Uh, I got a bunch of references here I can read from. Just tell me one second. Just one second. I, I'm, 18, I'm 18. Now. One of the brothers. No, no, no. It's 18. Yeah, yeah. 18. Um, no, no. No, no. One second. Okay. This is uh, this is Ezekiel 18 21. Yeah. But if the wicked mm. will turn from all his sins that he hath committed mm. and keep all mm. my statutes. And do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely mm. live. He shall not die. All his transgressions yeah. that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. So clearly in your Bible, God says, if the wicked man seeks forgiveness for the wickedness he's done and then turns back to God and follows his laws, then all the bad things that he did will be forgiven. Yeah, so, but... Uh... So where's where's the would, uh, sacrifice? I would just look at that in context. Uh, I'm looking at it in context. Oh, tell me the context. Well, the context is that the people are uh, are in judgment. They're under judgment of God, and uh, they're yeah, in. Uh, no one's disputing. No one's disputing the judgment of God. What's in dispute in exile, here? No, but what's in dispute here is that God needs a sacrificial system to forgive somebody's sin. Because this verse says the opposite of what you're saying. Well, it says you'll live, but I don't think it... Uh, it no, it says... Yeah. It says... If the wicked... Listen to the words. If the wicked yeah. will turn from all his sins that he hath committed yeah. and that he yeah. and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions... That he hath committed shall not be mentioned unto him. 
So basically, it will be forgiven all of those transgressions that he's done, all the wicked. Now, a wicked man is somebody who does deliberate wickedness. It's not accidental wickedness. It's deliberate wickedness. But when that wicked man recognizes that he's doing something wrong and he turns back to God and asks God for forgiveness and then says, I'm going to follow your, your, your laws now. And he follows the guidance from God. Then God says he'll forgive his wickedness. No mention of sacrifice anywhere. And then it continues. Have I any pleasure that, at all that the wicked should die, said the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turneth away from righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to all abominations that the wicked man doth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. So now it's the other way around. So the one who is righteous, who then turns to wickedness, all the good things he did now are erased. Yeah? yeah. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel. Is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turn away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turn away from his wickedness that he hath committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considers and turned away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed. And make you a new heart and a new spirit. For while ye lay die, O house of Israel, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, said the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. So basically God is saying, repent from your sins. No mention of sacrifice. And God says clearly, unequivocally, he will forgive them and not remind them. Hamza, now you just, go on. Can you read from Second Chronicles seven fourteen? Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. Okay, I've like two dozens of these, two dozen of these references. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be for there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So you said God can't do something which God has said twice. He does do. Yeah, but uh, that's. I look at that different to you. Uh, it's it's, it's not mean, talking Paul, about. Paul, 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 Paul. This is your Bible. This is God speaking. <laughs> so you're, it's not you're, talking you're, about the ultimate blessing of eternal life under the old covenant. You know, when it's when God says you live, it means you'll you'll stay in covenant in relation to me, and I, you'll be blessed with temporal blessings. It doesn't mean blessings. that at all. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't can I can I just actually go back, brother Paul? Um, how did God forgive the sins of the followers of Moses? The followers of Moses. You see, you got to look. You got to look at the at why the why the tabernacle was created. So that, because every day they offered up burnt offerings, the lamb in the morning and the lamb in the evening. Okay. So, so their, even if their sins were forgiven, are you saying their sins were forgiven with animal sacrifices? Well, I'm saying they they were in a covenant relation, or they made atonement with God. Right. Even right from the beginning, even Adam made atonement with God right. with a burnt offering, and and even Abraham offered oh. burnt offerings the whole okay, time. Hold on. So the point here is that they were forgiven without believing that Christ is crucified and they have to believe in the crucifixion and resurrection to be saved. They were saved in a different way. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, they were they were saved by uh, faith, yeah. But they, but they, they weren't couldn't... saved by believing Jesus was crucified on the cross. Is well, that what you're no, saying? Well, no, they couldn't at that time. They couldn't right. do that. Right, so they yeah. couldn't have done, right? So no. the point is, the point is, why does God then have to change 
that way of sacri- that way of uh, forgiveness? Why does he have to send his son two thousand years ago to be crucified in order to for people to be forgiven when people were, were quite <laughs> easily forgiven before? And I think animal sacrifices was for non-intentional sins. Is that right? Unintentional sins generally. In fact, unintentional. There is, in fact, there is no verse in the Bible that says sacrifice atones for all sins. Right. Not even the New Testament says this. Right. So, so Paul's so understanding. Just, it's just how were they forgiven? How were they forgiven at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, or the time of Abraham, peace mm-hmm. be upon him? How were they forgiven for intentional sins, for example? Re- repenting and turning your face to the Lord. That, that's right. why, for example, even in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, like God literally says, the sacrifice of the wicked is abominable to God. He does not accept it. So if you're a sinner, just by virtue of doing a sacrifice, that does not atone for the sin, and it does not make you righteous with God. And in fact, in places where you could not perform a sacrifice, God simply accepted a prayer. I think, Paul, you're a very good person for what I can understand. But the question you have to ask yourself is, is there any scriptural basis? Not patterns, not ideas, but a scriptural verse that says God cannot, keyword, cannot forgive sin without punishment first. And that is your basis for belief in Christ Jesus, that he died, he atoned for your sin, and thus you are righteous and justified before God. But I'm saying to you, from Revel, sorry, from Genesis to Revelation, not Revelation to Genesis, but from Genesis <laughs> to Revelation, you will not find a single verse that says that God either needs a sacrifice to forgive sin, or that atonement only comes through sacrifice. There is one verse which might say that, but if you read it correctly, it does not say that. So can you present us a verse, Paul? that says what you actually believe, rather than us giving you verses of the contrary, it's much more simple if you provide a verse that evidences your claim. Well, uh, like I said, uh, Abraham was already offering burnt offerings to God, so that but shows. That is, but that doesn't say to us that he only atones to sin through that. In fact, it also says that he obeyed and walked along whatever God commanded him to do in Genesis 16, I believe. So you can count his obedience as a means of forgiveness as well, which is why God says he chose him. So I'm not asking for analogies. I'm not asking for stories. When God speaks, I believe that God speaks clearly, Paul. So does God explicitly say, remember, I didn't ask for analogies or stories. Does God make it a doctrine for you to believe that he cannot forgive without punishment first, or that sacrifices are needed for forgiveness, or that you can only be atoned with a uh, sacrifice first. Does he say this, Paul? Yeah, but if they're always there, how can there be another way to But they're to not make always there. God? Well, Leviticus if chapter 5. There. Okay, I'll read a verse for you. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 11. But if he cannot afford two turtle doves or two pigeons, then he shall burn as his offering for the sin that he has committed a tent of ephah, of fine flour, for a sin offering. So even flour counts as an offering to God. There is not always a need for a blood sacrifice. That's what the Bible teaches. So our confusion now, Paul, comes into play where you directly contradict what Scripture says and you justify the contradiction by saying, well, if it's always there, then this is the case. But we've given you exceptions to this case, which break that thinking. So the question you have to ask yourself, Paul, is, is this systematically what I've been thought and I believe to be true? Or is it that Scripture does not explicitly say what I wanted to say, Paul? Yeah, but, uh, you know, the whole temple, uh, all the sacrifices. No, no, but for example, Paul, Paul, you're you're missing a key point. If you look at the sacrifices um, on the Day of Atonement and such, it's for unintentional sin. This is the first thing. So, look, he just set you a challenge. Time, Very, one second, one second. He just set you a challenge. Find a verse in the Bible where it says, this is how God forgives your sins through this sacrifice. Is it only way to do this? Now, the thing, the problem it's you've fine. got is, I'll explain something, Paul. You clutching at straws of 
uh, sacrificing this and sacrificing that doesn't answer what Ijaz is asking you. You need it where God says he does this thing, right? And the problem you've got is I give you two explicit places now where God says he does the opposite. So look at the difference. I give you two explicit times. And, and here's the problem. You're ignoring explicit verses and you're fishing in ambiguous verses. Mm. That straight away should be a problem for you. Why should you need to go to ambiguous verses to try and make your case? And mm. I ignore explicit verses which are against your case. And those explicit verses coming from the same Bible you believe is from God. It doesn't make any but, sense. Uh, the problem about talking about flower is that the one who comes to God for forgiveness with flower he still has to be uh, he still has to be in a state of atonement with God, and that done. That's not just a question of uh, of getting forgiveness for individual sins. It's it's a question of being a, uh, in a in a state of atonement before a holy God. What state and of atonement done, mean? What does state of atonement mean? Paul, Proverbs 15. It means it can be in covenant relation with God. No, 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 no. Now no, you're just adding no, your Christian... Before uh, you can even get forgiven, you have to be a, in a covenant relation no, with God. No, you don't. No, you don't. Before you can even be forgiven for anything. No, you don't. No, no you don't. That's not, where does God say that? Oh, Paul's frozen. I think he's oh. frozen. His internet's frozen. Um, uh, I mean, I just find it very unusual because we, we, we've got the formula of repentance prior to Christianity. People just turn to God with sincerity. They ask for forgiveness and Allah forgives them. We have the Jews practicing the same thing. Okay. Um, you know, we have Jesus praying to God as well. Okay. And then something happens, something changes. And Paul comes in and there's obviously other writers that influence the Bible. And Hamza, you make a very, very important point, which is why would you ignore the explicit verses and you would replace the explicit verses with conjecture? Too much pressure. Uh, and, and exactly. Why would you have to do that? I mean, it's ridiculous. And interestingly, the Quran says exactly the same thing, doesn't it? It says that in the Quran, there are uh, explicit verses. The mis and it says the mischief makers ignore yeah. the explicit verses and yeah. um, ignore, and they will go they will turn to the ambiguous ones or mm. they, uh, you know and and this is because they have a disease in their hearts and Allah explains the symptoms Allah explains the symptoms of the one who goes to ambiguity and they ignore the explicit verses and Allah and Allah says that that symptom is something within their hearts corruption let's see if this guy can defend himself Isaac Isaac, how are you? Yeah. Welcome to the stream. Hey, how are you guys doing? Very well, thank you, Isaac. All right, mate. How are you doing after your last roasting? I don't, I don't recall it going that way. Yeah, I know. How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> I thought we'll it was, I thought it was a friendly conversation. <laughs> oh, sorry? So, Isaac, what do you believe and uh, why do you believe it? Well, well, I believe in Jesus and I believe in the teachings of Jesus, which is why I, I kind of like... I don't know. I told you guys like before briefly that, that I, didn't, I didn't really grow up with like a set religion, and I kind of like respected every religion, which I still do. And it, I didn't start assigning to a religion until like maybe a little over two years ago when I started like investigating more and I fi started finding contradictions between them. And I just found like Jesus was the most perfect human to ever existed. Who uh, I believe is God, but you know when I was you learning, believe, you believe like, Jesus was God. How many natures did he have? He had um. Well, he, he had two natures. Well, a hypostat, hypostatic nature. It what was does that a union mean? Between, what does that mean? Really, from what I've been reading, you know, because it, it is confusing, like coming in, into it. But from after reading it, it, it does make sense after a while. Cool, no, to, explain it to me. Explain it to me. Okay, explain it, to um, me Jesus, how Jesus the person and how many yeah. natures or wills he had. But there's, there's actually was a, a debate. Because um, what was it? Hey, jazz. I've been I've been taking your advice. I have been reading a little bit on uh, patristics and stuff. So there was a debate in the early church if he had two wills or not, and he did have he and then the, the uh, Catholic position is that he uh, did uh, have two wills. No, 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 no. The debate that took place at the Council of Chalcedon in the fifth century. 
to determine what the nature of Jesus was. So nobody knew what the nature of Jesus was in the time of Jesus or straightly after him. It took 500 years to determine whether Jesus had one nature or two natures. I would say it wasn't, I wasn't canonized, but I believe there were Greek writers no, already. No, canonized. Had... Orthodox. It wasn't orthodox. So how many natures? Um, so do you agree with the Council of Chalcedon? Well, I don't. I haven't looked into that, but if you're saying that's when they're saying he had two, um, two they natures, I agree with that. Somebody has two natures, yes. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would um, challenge if that was the earliest um, recording of that, uh, as, as um, other believers didn't believe that Jesus had divinity prior to that. I don't. No, think no, no. The the, the point, the, I'll give you an example. William Lane Craig. You heard of William Lane Craig? Yes, yes. All right. So he rejects Jesus having two natures. He's a he's a heretic on this issue, and he accepts it. He says, "I can't." I would, believe, I, would, I, can't. I, would I would agree. What you would agree that he's is I'm a heretic. Sorry? The heretic. Yes, yes. Yeah. So William Lane Craig is a confessed heretic on this issue because he doesn't understand how Jesus could have a God nature and a human nature. But you agree mm. he has a God nature and a human nature. Yes. Right. How does it's that work? It you're talking about like the science behind it, or are you talking about the theology behind it? I want to understand how you have two natures. Does the when you're walking on the earth is is it like the human nature in control, well, the I, God nature in control? Can they uh, interchange? Can one overtake the other? What's the script? Talk to well, me. Well, I, I, I like I, I've, I've had talked to other friends who don't who aren't as interested in, in um religion as I am, and they asked me the question before. And the example I always like to use is like um, um what is it called the uh, wave particle duality of uh, like the the nature of light has this duality of two natures it's actually a wave and a particle and and it sometimes it's neither and it sometimes it's both and it's flip flops how is that so it, it, it goes against everything we know from like newtonian it, 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 no, no, no 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 the, the, the problem you've got with your example is it, it's not a wave and a matter at the same time it's well, a one it or the two other nature well, we no, can no, no, no. It, it can be oh, okay. It 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 can either be a wave or it can be matter. It can interchange between that. But yeah, it can, no problem. within the same, but within the same ray of light, it has it can. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Right, right, right. So right. Different. Okay. Same as right. Jesus. So, so you're saying Jesus. Jesus? All right, okay. So he's you're the saying the world. He's the light of the world. All right. Do me a favor, Isaac. Stop preaching. Yeah, and just listen no, to what's being no, offered yeah. to you. Well, you're actually what I believe. I'm telling you what I believe. Yeah, I know you are. You're preaching. Don't need to preach. Just concentrate on what's being asked of you. Okay. Okay. Cool. So explain to me how this dual nature works. Is it when Jesus is walking, is it the God nature in control, the human nature in control, or they interchange? Sometimes it's a human, sometimes it's God, or can God overtake the human nature when necessary? And so uh, the example I like to use, do you believe Jesus is the same as like Superman? walking around looking like Clark Kent. So we all know when you see Clark Kent, he can fire laser beams from his eyes. Mm -hmm. He can lift a car, even though he's got his suit on. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. without the red underpants over his short, over his leggings and all that business and out of the cape, he still has the strength of Superman and the powers of Superman. Is that how you're saying Jesus was? No. No. Because Clark, Clark, Clark Kent, would, is, he's just putting on a different outfit, right? Uh, right, right. So, could this, Je so when Jesus walked the earth, this, was he God or was he man? Who, which will was in control? I think he's. Um, I think he's frozen. Yeah, I think so. He's got an internet issue. Um, uh, Paul, you can help him out, mate. Which will was in control? He only had one will. <laughs> 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 Uh, which brother, brother Paul, brother Paul, um, oh, brother Paul, okay. uh, brother Paul, uh, Hamza brought up a very important point to you, yeah. which, uh, was, which, which was that there are explicit verses in the Bible that point towards forgiveness being uh, attained from, from simply repenting and asking for forgiveness from God Almighty, and those are explicit verses and just, yeah, about, can I just stop you a second? Sorry, forgive yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Paul is saying Jesus had one will. Isaac is saying Jesus had two wills. You're both Christians. 
You're both inspired by the Holy Spirit. Fight. <laughs> Why should we fight? <laughs> I don't, I don't believe wrong. in Because uh, one of you is wrong. I don't, I don't believe in the Nicene Creed uh, model of uh, the divinity of Christ anyway. No, but one of you is wrong here. I don't believe in the eternal uh, generation of the sun. I don't believe that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I'm saying to you, so one of you is wrong here. So um, well, either Isaac is wrong, and uh, we'll we'll let you guys fight it out. Oh, there we go. He's gone. All right. Well, just can I just say a word about uh, intentional sin? I think uh, the, there is no forgiveness for intentional or premeditated sin anyway there is. because it's uh, there is. I just read it to you. It's called repentance. It is. It's called no, repentance. You can't. You can't willfully repent, uh, willfully sin against God, no, and, Paul. Then, and then ask for repentance because oh, you know. Paul, 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 you're wrong. I read the verse in the Bible. It's presumptuous sin, and that and that was oh, a wicked man. A wicked man does intentional sin, and God says He will forgive that wicked man if he repents. He can only have forgiveness if he sin out of weakness. No, don't say that at all. Uh, I think he just wants to. I think he just wants to make a point. Yeah, well, well, you're, point, muted. Yeah. you're muted. You're muted. Yeah, muted, We can't hear your lovely voice. So I have all these mute buttons on. Paul, historically in Judaism, Hasidic Judaism, there were three categories of sin: intentional, unintentional, and forced. Of these three categories, right? Intentional sins are sins that you can perform repentance for. And then there's a form of penance for it in one way or the other. So the Jews have always had this paradigm. Are you familiar with the Jewish background to this or not? Uh, I don't really care about the Jewish background. I just read. But they're the ones that wrote the Hebrew Bible. I just Bible. read the Bible. I yeah, but you can't, you can't ignore the context to it, Paul. Right? Their doctrines come from that book that you're claiming to be yours as well. You when Jesus... You when Je Listen, Paul, when Jesus was debating with the Pharisees, those were the people he was debating with. At no point did he say to them, hey, those three categories of sins that you have, rubbish. He never says that. Rather, his, uh, the, the narrative of it, the atonement of him dying for your sins is premised on those three categories. So you can't say it doesn't matter to you when your very soteriology, the very doctrine of salvation that you believe in is built on it. Does Christ Jesus ever say their soteriology is wrong? But how can you say I'm going to do this and that sin, and you plan it in your mind, and then and then and then that's what you... wicked people do, mate. Literally, no. <laughs> God is not mocked. God, What's a... God no, no, that is Paul, 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 Paul. What's a wicked man? Yeah, but he's, he's still sinning oh, out of no, weakness. What, what's a, what's a wicked man? A wicked man does he? Can you guys hear me? Sure. We can hear you. Just one second, Isaac. Okay. Paul, what's a wicked man? Everybody knows what a wicked man is. Well, tell us, that, mate. Um, Hold on, Hamza. If I could just read this verse, right? David intentionally had a general killed so that he can marry his, uh, to have uh, relations with his wife. Here is what it says in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. So that was premeditated. It was intentional. And the Lord still well, it wasn't. He, he started off with his, his sin in weakness because he was tempted by, the, by Bathsheba. That's how it all started. And then the ball got rolling after that. Yeah, so but the felt... intention to kill for that woman was an intentional sin. And what does the Lord say? I've forgiven you for that. So, yeah, it proves the point. Uh, forgive me, Brother Hamza, please continue. Yeah, I'm just going to... I need to pin Paul to the wall. I'm a poet and I don't know it. Right. Um, <laughs> wall, Paul to the wall, right? All right. It took me a second. Took me All a right, second. good man. All right, what's a wicked man? A wicked man uh, breaks the law, of course, and all that kind does of thing. Does he do it intentionally or accidentally? Well, he doesn't, uh, doesn't say, I'm going to do this sin and then a couple of days later i'm going to repent because it's there's, not repenting there's, there's a it? wicked man intentionally it's not repentance how do you repent you can only does, repent does the, does, the, look, does the wicked man intentionally do sin intentionally but not not uh, not 
you don't deliberate about deliberate uh, deliberate about it uh, days in advance and then no 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 a wicked say, man is somebody a wicked man is somebody who does wicked things now that wicked thing could be rape killing stealing it could be any of these things and all of these things are premeditated all of these things are intentional so this guy is a bad guy so god is saying this guy this guy who does all this raping and pillaging all he needs to do is stop what he's doing ask me to forgive what he's done and i'll forget everything he's done that's what your bible teaches mm -mm. it doesn't teach that does it isaac it teaches you repent no 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 uh, yes ezekiel 18 23 21 21 says exactly that so what you're saying uh -uh, for like you know something well, I'm, a, I'm a christian so what so I'm, I'm, I'm going by what jesus says well well i'm going by what prophet ezekiel said well what's the context of that I'm, well, the context there. Okay. Exactly. I'll tell you the I'll tell you the context there. I don't know why you Christians are so concerned about context when it's something it's uh, explicit, and when it's ambiguous, you don't give a damn about context. Yeah, you're hypocrites. Um, um, so when it comes to uh, something, there's, there's, there's no con the context is clear. When uh, the wicked man, uh, okay, What's I'll the, give it to you. What is the context? Why are you asking the context? Because I don't, I don't even know what verse you're talking about or what happened okay, previous well, I'll to read this. It to you. I'll read it to you. If the wicked man, Ezekiel 18, 21, if the wicked man turns away from his wickedness and repents, repent. and keep, repent. Yes. That's what I said. That's what I said. Repent. No, no, no. This is what I'm saying. And Paul is saying, no, the wicked man can't repent. You can't because wicked means you haven't repented. No, it's before the repentance, the wickedness. Yes, and then once you repent and you and you accept Jesus, you're no longer the wicked man. Jesus doesn't exist in this time, my giddy aunt. Well, well, there's just still steps. You, you ask God. You, instead of asking no, no, you right. God, well, it's the same steps, though. It's the same steps. Isaac, you don't even know what verse we're talking about, and you're acting giving exegesis on it. Well, well, I said it. I said repent, and you told me no, it doesn't say. Isaac, I said that is word, so disingenuous what you're doing now. No, you. I said you have to repent, and you said the, the verse doesn't say repent, and no, then I, as you're reading the verse, you Isaac, said repent. Isaac, Isaac. Don't embarrass yourself. My argument is the verse says to repent and the repentance will forgive the wicked man. That's my argument. You come on here. What verse are you talking about? No, it doesn't say that. No, you said, all you, have to do is ask. you said all you have to do is ask for forgiveness. And I said you must repent first. What do you think I for? What do you think repentance is? No, repentance is a process. It's not like repentance What's is one sentence. They don't say, I'm sorry. I, repentance is going through the whole um, sorrow. Feeling bad for doing something, repenting, the process, well, and not like one one sentence. When you were when you repent, you just say one word and, and you feel good about it. What's, I, the repent for days. Repentance, what's the difference between repentance and asking for forgiveness? Asking for forgiveness is one sentence. Repentance is a process. Oh, shut up! You're talking crap. Well, no, I'm serious. No, when you're you go to confession. You know what, Isaac? No, I'm Isaac, not. you're not helping this conversation. Right, Paul. Okay. <laughs> So the verse says, mm. wicked man, if he repents, which means turns back and he seeks and he follows God's laws, he will be forgiven. Now, the wicked man is the one who does intentionally bad things. Mm. Yeah. No sacrifice, no nothing. So going back to what he just asked you before, there's no verse in the Bible that says blood sacrifice atones for all your sins. It doesn't. Nowhere. You have two verses in the Bible that says repentance from your wickedness and God will forgive you without the mention of sacrifice. Explicitly. Yeah, but it's not it's not in covenant relationship to God without without sacrifice. No Jew was in covenant relationship to God. What are you on about? Sacrifices. Paul, Paul, what are you on about? What are you on about? Well, even look at Abraham. How did God enter in the covenant relationship with Abraham? He told him. Oh, can you give us this verse? Give us the Holy Grail verse, which says you have to have blood fat sacrifice for forgiveness of sins by God. Anywhere. 
Well, I mean, look at uh, look at the. Uh, Stop the telling me to look at this and look at that. Just okay, give me the day verse. of atonement. I'm just thinking it. Day of atonement. Day of atonement is to atone for all the sins you did the previous year that you may not realize you did unintentionally. Yeah, Carry yeah. on. Right. That's not intentional sin. So how would you get rid of intentional sin? Well, like I said, you. you you can't get rid of a premeditated sin, in my view. You, you can. I'm just giving you the verse. <laughs> just give you the verse. No, because Why are you it? you're you're saying that God is going to approve. It's, it's yes. Giving, it's approving yes. your sin. Yes. He's saying, okay, you sinned. God says, I can see you've killed a hundred people. I can see you realize what you did was wrong. I can see you're not going to kill anyone else. I can see you're going to keep my laws. Yeah, but you don't you, really you, regret it. You don't really yeah, you regret it, do you? If you're planning it in... Where in, does it say regret it? Well, it's a part of repentance to, to regret repentance what you've done. Repentance is turning back. But you're just using sacrifice to to make it, to cleanse your conscience. That's I'm not using... No, 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 no. Sacrifice has got nothing to do with repentance. Oh. Because if you read the verse in Ezekiel, there's no mention of sacrifice. Just turn back. All repentance is, don't get lost in the word, regret, ask for forgiveness. All, all repentance is, you recognize what you've done goes against what God teaches, and you're going to stop doing uh, going against what God teaches, and you're going to do what God teaches. And God says, if you do that thing, I won't remember the things you did. Re forgive you. I mean, David it's got into not a rocket situation. science. Like David got into a situation, he didn't, he didn't plan it, he didn't premeditate it, he didn't say, "I'm gonna, I'm looking for a woman to have sex with," so, and then I'm gonna bump his bump her husband off. Did it? You know what I mean? He, he slid into it, you know, by his by his weakness. That's all. And Listen, once it got, once it Paul, started rolling, he couldn't Paul, stop it, could he? Paul, the principle is very clear. God doesn't require sacrifice to forgive wicked people doesn't it's need like it saying, uh, i'm going to rob this bank and if i don't get any money i'm going it to does go not, and, uh, it does, look, look, look. turn him back gonna... re realize when you did something wrong and you turn back and you say to god sorry i'm not going to do it again and you right. i'm going to keep your laws god says if you truly do that thing if you truly are sorry and you truly keep my laws, then don't worry about the things you did. I forgive you. That's it. And it's yeah, explicit. If you look it's at the book Paul, of Paul, Paul, it's explicit. And my question to you is, well, I know the answer to the question, to be honest. But anyway, why do you ignore explicit verses, seeking out ambiguous verses to counter it? Shall I tell you why, Paul? Because your mind you know is why? in a box. Because you can't think about these things too much because they just don't make sense. You know that doesn't make sense. But because you know that what I've just said to you now collapses the whole idea of atonement. Collapses the whole idea about there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Kills it. Dead in the water. And that's your so. doctrine as a Christian. Go on, you, know, you know, Paul, one of the difficulties here, one of the reasons the early Jews rejected Christianity, right? And this was a problem that the early church wrote about, and it's a reason that they became so anti-Semitic, was the Jews couldn't understand that they were being told that someone had died for all of their sins, and all the Jews had to turn around and say, was well, that's not our atonement system. Even the early Christians, whom you now consider to be Catholics, still believe that you have to do works in order to be forgiven. Repentance is an action that you do. So, Paul, just do us a favor. Let's just, like, roll back a little bit, right? There is one question before all of us. Again, I believe that God is clear. I believe that God is truthful. And I believe that God is authoritative. The, just answer the question as simply as possible. I don't want an analogy I don't want a story. I don't want, you know, some kind of analysis. Is there such a verse where God says that he can only forgive sin if he punishes you first? Is there such a verse is the question? A very specific question, Paul. Is there such a verse? Well, there's a, right after Adam sinned, it's what we call the pro, proto-evangelium. Not, you know? not an analogy, Paul. A very specific. 
perfect thing. You see the problem, Paul? You see, see if you ask me, where does yeah, Allah say, like, if you reverse the question, where does Allah say that he's one? I can give you chapter one first. But when I ask you the same thing, it's an analogy, it's a story. Scripture matters. When God speaks, he doesn't speak in a vacuum. He speaks to educate and inform Paul. Yeah, so, but in the but, Old Testament, he speaks through analogies, doesn't he? He doesn't reveal... Yeah, but, he, uh, but then he gives you chapters and verses. But then he gives you chapters and verses, doesn't he? That's the whole point, yeah. Paul. So do, do you have a verse? Does this verse exist? If there is such a verse, can you read it for us? If there is no such verse, just simply say, Brother Ejaz, there is no such verse. Well, all, all I can do is, is point you to the New Testament then. It's all uh, there but not the even Testament. the New Testament says that, Paul. So let's go to the New Testament. Where can that verse be called? What verse? What verse do you want now? The same the verse as we've been asking from the very start. Where does God say he cannot forgive sin without punishment first? Well, he's demonstrated it. Uh, you know, he demonstrated <laughs> it. No, he hasn't demonstrated <laughs> that, Paul. Come on, Paul. I know that. You're okay, sincere. then book of Hebrews then. That's chapter the verse, 9, verse 22. Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 22. Yeah, yeah I guess. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, how, whatever how do I know you were going to say that, Paul? Because that's the verse <laughs> I wanted you to go to. Didn't I say, and these two can attest it, that I not said that there was one such verse that may give you such a thing. I said that, Paul. So let's go to Hebrews 9.22. Can you read it out for me, Paul, please? Uh, okay, I've got to have a Bible. Uh... I've got one. I can read it for uh, us Just all. as you're doing that, sassy heathen, sassy heathen, you're an atheist. Stop hiding in the comment section. Come on here. We'll demonstrate. You say you've, you've heard nothing new. We'll demolish your worldview here. All right, stop hiding in the comments as if you, you're some clever atheist. Step into the arena. Well, sorry. Okay, so what? You want... a perfect storm. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what you have that, really. Uh, <laughs> it? If I'm over here now, you're like, yep. I'm not, I'm over here. <laughs> okay. Right, uh... so Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it for you. And then I'm going to introduce you to something that is going to blow your mind. Okay, Paul, I guarantee this. Right? So I'm going to read it for you as it currently exists. The verse reads, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. Almost. Not everything is purified with blood. And it continues, mm -hmm. Without okay. the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. You know what the no problem remission. is here, Paul? Yeah, forgiveness, remission, whatever you want to say. Yeah, right? That's remission. what my translation reads. Both reads forgiveness, right? Now, Paul, here's okay. the problem. The first half of the verse contradicts the second half. The first half says that almost, almost, and then the second says that there is no. One speaks of a partial and the other speaks of the absolute. But let me blow your mind now, Paul. Let me blow your right. mind. The earliest form of this text, Hebrews 9.22, is found in a manuscript called P46. And for P46, it says, and with sh without the shedding of blood, there is almost no forgiveness of sins. The word almost is repeated for the second half. So the question becomes, Paul, if the earliest text is true, then it teaches us that it does not require that there must be blood for the forgiveness of sins. The question becomes, why would that be changed? And that is, I think it's because it's in defense of this doctrine. So the well, question your... becomes, Paul, where do, do you believe the earliest manuscript or do you believe the Bible of today? And how do you reconcile the first half of the verse contradicting the second half of the verse? Well, I mean, I'm a I'm a KGV only, anyway. So I do uh, I do believe that uh, I do believe that uh, the manuscripts were not all all the lines of transmission were not mm -hmm. preserved in the providence of God, but was only some. Yeah, but Paul, oh, that doesn't true, answer the question, Paul. That doesn't answer the question. The fact well, that is, explains. You know, that explains why the why the text was corrupted in some in some manuscripts. It just explains no, that. Not me. corrupted, Paul. This was the original text that described erase. This is let's be clear here. This is the most early and the most authoritative. That's version the original text according to the textual critics, which I do I do to. See the problem you've got. You're, with Paul, you're just following yeah. them. The problem you've got with Paul is he's a KGV onlyist. He doesn't exactly. believe Jesus was eternal. He's he's got I his do, own mission. I've got an easy question for you, Paul. The Logos was eternal, not not Jesus. Can I the give Logos you an easy question, eternal. Paul? 
Yeah, go one on. One second, Hamza, one second, just one go second. On. I've got an easy question for him, though, easy right. question. Right. Okay. Right. So, Paul, is it yes or realize, no? Right. <laughs> Hold on, Paul, do you realize that the first half of the verse contradicts the second? Because the first half says almost, almost, not everything, almost. And if that is the case, that there means that there are some things which can be forgiven it without says the shedding of with blood. blood. Okay, hmm? it says purged with blood, but what is that? No, read the first half of the verse, Paul. Read it for us. It's in front of you. I can see the Almost screen. all things are by the law purged with blood. Pause right there. Pause right there. Almost. So uh, does that mean that there are things which can be purged which do not require blood? Yeah, but it depends what you mean by, no, no, but by beautiful. purged anyway. But, but that's the point, Paul. That's the point. That the, if there are things which can be forgiven or purged, as you would put it, without the shedding of blood, then that proves Hamza's point. That you don't require blood to forgive sin. It's an option. Not everything requires it, Paul. Where do you disagree? It depends what the text means there by purged. Purged. Oh, it no. Just... Don't go carry on us, please. Paul, it's clear what it says. In fact, Paul, you understood the question so properly that when I asked you for a verse, you went to this one. So you knew the context beforehand. So you can't tell me now that purge does not mean forgive. But when you you chose this verse, Paul, I didn't choose it for you. I, I let you come here. So you know the context. It is about forgiveness, Paul. Are you saying that you were wrong to come to this verse when I asked you about a verse which says you cannot um. be forgiven without blood? I don't agree with your interpretation of it. That's it's right. not my interpretation. Almost is a clear word. Does almost mean some things or everything? Well, uh, like I say, I don't. The word almost. You said you disagree with my interpretation. You're just, my, you're just doing your exegesis on that on that text. No, no. I'm let, Paul. I'm saying that the word almost means almost. It doesn't mean everything. What do Purge you say that blood. almost means? What does almost mean, Paul? It means uh, not everything, yeah. It Beautiful. Everything. So then I'm not doing eisegesis. We're reading the exact same thing. So not, if not everything is purged by blood, then that means what, Paul? Yeah. That we were right in what we said, that God does not require, requires absolution, that there is no exception. So we were right, Paul. We're not, we don't want to be right to, 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 to just for the sake of disagreeing with you, but we read the text honestly and consistently. It doesn't say the that sin, specific sins were purged by blood, does it? It doesn't oh, have to said... say that, Paul. It doesn't have to say that. Does it have to say that, Paul? No. So all of these reasons you're coming up with after the fact does not change the main point that we've just made, does it? That's the beauty of it. Hamza, please take away. I have something to do. Forgive me, uh, yeah, Paul. No, I'll, very, be let's very quick. I'll be listening. Yeah, I've got a very quick question for you, Paul. I've yeah. got one very quick question for you, Paul. Are there any okay. explicit verses in the Bible where God says he can forgive sin without requiring sacrifice? <sighs> I, don't, I don't think so, no. Brother Paul, let me, let me, let me, let me, Paul, Paul, let me repeat that question to you because maybe you misunderstood the question. Are there any explicit? I don't words? say it every time. Every time that forgiveness of sin is mentioned, there has to be. Uh, are, are, there I, any, I, are, are there any times um, explicit verses in the Bible where God says he can forgive and forget the sins of the wicked people? Yeah. Without the need of sacrifice. Is there any explicit verses? Yeah, there may be, but it not, uh, what does that prove? Well, what, does that prove? Pro I, what does it prove? Yeah, what does it prove? Well, it proves that God can forgive the sin. It doesn't prove that anybody can be. It doesn't prove that any man can be can make atonement. All right. Are there, any verses, like this? Are there any verses like this where God can forgive the wicked person without the need of sacrifice? Are there any verses? Yeah, but it's still uh, there are. Which the overall are teaching of the Bible is that God, the man no. has to be make Which atonement through verses? blood. No, no, no. We're talking about explicit verses here. So I want to understand why you reject this explicit verse. So which verses are we talking about here? Well, a, a verse for what? No. So we're looking for an explicit verse where God says he can forgive 
without the need of uh, taking sacrifice. He can, without the need for payment. He can just well, forgive. Lots, there's what? lots of verses that just mention forgiveness oh, without, me mentioning, without mentioning sacrifice. Which one? There's lots, Which one? Of, there's lots of those verses. Give me one. Give me one. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of any offhand. All right. So when God says that he can forgive the wickedness, the sin of the wicked person without the need of a sacrifice, what's God telling you? Well, I mean, the whole time, the whole time that Israel was in exile, they were forgiven without. In that explicit there was no, verse. There was, there was no Paul, temple. Paul. There was no temple, was there? Paul, Paul, was Paul. In this explicit verse where God says he can forgive the sins of the wicked person without any need of sacrifice, what is God telling you? But look look after Adam sinned. What, what is God, God telling Adam? you? The, see, the, the key to this was the word explicit, which means it's not ambiguous. It means it's direct. It's telling you. So in this explicit verse where God says, he forgives the sins of the wicked person. Does he say? Does he say anywhere in the Old Testament they will give eternal life? Yes. Without sacrifice, it doesn't yes. say anywhere in the Old Testament. Yes. yes. You can't yes. show me one verse that says that. All right. Uh, God uh, will uh, give uh, eternal life to anybody okay, okay. without sacrifice. That verse I just referred you to, Ezekiel eighteen twenty one, says eternal exactly life. That. It doesn't say anything about eternal it life. It doesn't say though. eternal life. No. It does. No, it doesn't. There's nowhere in the Old Testament that says eternal. God will, I will give you eternal life if you repent. It doesn't. Repent. All right, one second, no. one second, one second. Tell me then, in the Old Testament. Yeah, Ezekiel. I just, I just read it to you about three times. I'll read it, it for a fourth time. Live. What does that, what does that word mean? Live. It just means live. the promise. It just means they'll survive mean? the what exile. Do you think it means? Okay, one it second. Just, what, what do you think it, it could means? could just mean they survive the exile, and that's all it means. Um, what do you think it means? Hamza, Hamza. Why Hamza, should it he, mean any more uh, than that? Uh, uh, one Paul, second, one second. Brother Paul, second. Hamza, does it say live and not die? One second, I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah. Live, I, and I, live and not die physically. Uh, uh, well, well, that's what you're interpreting. One second, one second. Our mate Isaac loved the term, um, what was the word, context? So let's apply context here. Wow, I don't see April there. Is that April? Is that the April? No way. He's nodding. Oh, brilliant. You're on next. You're on next. I don't know who I'm April is. Context? Huh? Context to April? Who's April? Oh, not April. Oh, April, she's, she's an TikTok? atheist. She's been on so many streams in the chat, and she's never oh. plucked up courage to come on, and she's here. Is that a doll behind her? Oh, no, so please. My bad. Sorry, April. Anyway, continue. Right, 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 right. So listen. <clears throat> if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed mm -hmm. and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Now stop. When would his transgressions be mentioned unto him? At what point in his life? It do not mean eternal life. No. It just means... When's God going to remind you of your sins? Hmm. When's God going to remind you of your sins? No, on judgment day, I guess. Right. So why is God going to say about someone who lives that he's not going to be reminded of his sins? Because he's not dead yet. He has to be dead to be reminded of his sins. Yeah? But God says he's going to live and be and not be reminded of his sins so that living is not referring to oh i'm going to have another day eating some dates it's, it's basically you're going to live for eternal let me keep reading though uh all his transgressions he hath committed they shall not be mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he hath done he shall live so this is all the righteousness he's done he's going to be rewarded with life yeah okay mm -hmm. have i any I pleasure at all that the wicked should die what does he mean by this? If you read your Bible properly with proper exegesis, this is talking about when wic when uh, the wicked die, does, does God take pleasure in them dying you forever? Can't, you can't put eternal sad. life in Just one drop second. it into that context. You one know, second. You just drop no, no. Life into what that you context. need to do, what you need to do is do some homework on this verse. And, and I challenge you to come back next next time on this verse. So write it down, please. 
because you seem to have forget the smashing you took last time, and you've come back as if like you've never been in the ring with us. But anyway, one second. Um, but when the righteous turned away from their righteousness and committed iniquity and that according to all abominations that the wicked man doth, shall he live? He, all his righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned. So what's that again? This is talking about the day of judgment. This is talking about, is he going to live after Maybe. he's turned away from all his righteousness? No, none of you. We remind him none of the good things he's done. Okay. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Here now is house of Israel. Is not that my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turn away from his righteousness, and this is KJV, by the way, yeah? Turn from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, dieth in them. Um, uh, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die again when the wicked man turn away from all his wickedness that he hath committed and does that which is lawful and right. He shall save his soul alive not his body his soul alive. yeah but it's soul in old testament it's just another name for you no for your body, because for he your considered body. and turned away from all his transgressions that he had committed he shall surely live he shall not die yet said the house of israel the way of the lord is not equal Ho house of israel are not my ways equal are not your ways unequal Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make ye a new heart and a new spirit, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, said the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. This is all about judgment and all about what will be the deciding factor on that day now judgment will happen after you die and the determining factor is whether or not you shall be reminded of your wickedness or your righteousness so this is the explicit verse that i asked you for this is god telling you explicitly that he doesn't require sacrifice and that's what you asked me for and god's told you straight here the wicked man leaves no sacrifice just repentance and you can't refute it, mate. You just can't refute it. You just need uh, to go away and think about it, reflect upon it, and try to reconcile it with the nonsense of Christianity that you're trying to squeeze into it. You're trying to, the, 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 this myriad lens of Christianity you're trying to make in the Old Testament, because it doesn't fit. So you've got a problem here. Either this verse is wrong or your, your doctrine is wrong. And I'm telling you straight now, your doctrine is wrong. It doesn't marry up to what God says. So you think you're doing what God says. You're not. All right. Uh, brother Paul, before you go, thank you for coming on. Um, but just before mm. you go, I just want to ask you a very quick question, brother Paul. Yeah. Has, has anyone ever wronged you in your life? Wronged me, I guess. Yeah. I, was, I would imagine so, yeah. And have you I'm, forgiven? It to everybody. And did you Absolutely. forgive them? Did you? Yes, are you a forgiving course. person? Do you forgive people, Paul? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and no would problem. you say that? Would you say that you forgive them without necessarily asking for anything back? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I do. And would yeah. you say that's the most merciful that a person can be, which is not to ask for a price or a, uh, you know, punishment or something? They just forgive out of. The fact that they're merciful, like you're merciful to the person who wrongs you, would you say that was the perfect form of mercy? Well, for us, yeah, for us, human, for us, humans, so how, how can we attribute anything less to our Creator, Paul? That's what you need to think about, my brother. If you, because of mercy that you have that has been instilled in you by the Creator, and that merciful soul that you have means that you forgive people without taking money, without taking a price, without having them bowing down and and, and begging you, holding their, your feet for, for forgiveness or whatever, just because they ask with sincerity that, Brother Paul, I'm really sorry I did this. I, I really apologize. Can you please forgive me? And because of that mercy, Paul, you just forgive them. How can we attribute less mercy to the one that gave us the mercy in the first place yeah but but god's honor is infinite my 
My honour is not infinite. It's just I nobody agree. can damage me that much. I, I agree, but that means God is far more merciful than you, Paul. You just say <laughs> you just say someone could damage God's honour. No, I, I said nobody can damage my honour in the same way that the, the honour of God can be damaged. No one can damage the honour of God. Nobody can honour the, uh, the, the, the no, nobody can damage or diminish the no, honour of Allah. You can't take anything away from God or add anything to God. Yeah, but you can offend it. That's what I'm saying. You can offend. No, but you're not going to yeah. remove anything. From, oh, look, I, I don't want to bring the Quran to it, but Allah, know, says clearly, Allah says clearly. Oh, mm. Hamza's frozen there. <laughs> The day when the angels laid them out and no, Hamza, you your your internet is just playing up a little bit. But brother Paul, I just want you to you just ponder. Have, God. Uh, Sorry, you, your internet, Hamza, is just frozen. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Sorry, should, did you hear my Quranic verse? No, no, it didn't didn't come. Oh, oh, so, so basically, Allah says in the Quran, "Let those believe, believe. Let those who disbelieve, disbelieve. Leave them to me." And the day when the angels lie them, stretch them out, and tell them, "This is the day you used to deny," then you'll know the reality. So uh, that's, that's paraphrase. But the point here is this. You cannot benefit God and you cannot harm God. Standard. As soon as you think you can, that's not God. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, not God. Does, why does he punish us then for sins then? If he well, oh, okay. well, well, uh, Hamza, we shouldn't go into that because uh, Brother Paul, uh, this yeah, has yeah. Been quite, we've had you on for quite a long time. Yeah, all right, yeah, another time. We're, yeah, we're, we're very, very grateful, Paul, uh, for Remember you Remember that verse? On. In fact, what is it? You wrote it down? Have you wrote it down? Ezekiel 18, I think, or something like 18, that. 1821. Yeah. In fact, I look forward to your exegesis. In fact, Paul, <laughs> we've had you on for such a long time that I'm sure that your pajamas are now fully dry. They uh, should be dry now. Just before you go, Paul, just before yeah. you go, Paul, I want to invite you back onto the perfect storm in two weeks' time. Right. Yeah? As our special guest. And there's two reasons I want to do this. <laughs> One, I want your exegesis on this, yeah? And two, I want to know, I want you to justify your KJV Bible only as position. And the Trinity, yeah. can do the Trinity. No, no, no. I want you to, I want you to, no, because you said you're a KJV only -est. I'm a KJV only -est. Right, right, right. I want to probe why you're a KJV only -est. All right? Okay, yeah. So you, next week, two weeks time, yeah? Not next Thursday, Thursday after. Mm. Do your homework on Ezekiel. Take care, dude. Tara. Yeah, take care. Love you all. Have a nice, have pleasure. A nice, have a nice pleasure. evening, Paul. And just before you go, Paul, just please ponder about what I told you about mercy. Uh, mm. There is no way that God's creation, who were, who have been given the concept of being merciful, could ever be more merciful than the one that created us. It simply doesn't make sense, Paul. So if somebody asks me for forgiveness and I can forgive them out of mercy and empathy and love for that person, then there is no way that my form of mercy could exceed the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why, Paul, in Islam, Allah says that if your sins stretch from the earth to the heavens and you turn to me with sincerity, and you ask for forgiveness, I will forgive you. This is the mercy that we have in Islam, that if Allah is approached with sincerity and a person asks for forgiveness, they make an intention not to repeat the sin. And um, they, they, they um, so the three criteria are that they are regretful, they are ashamed of what they did. Number two, that they um, uh, make an intention not to repeat the sin. And number three, that they ask for forgiveness with sincerity. Allah says that even if your sins stretch from the earth to the heavens and you turn to me, I will forgive you. And then Allah says that if you turn back to that sin and you once again turn back to me for forgiveness and you've satisfied those three criteria, that I will forgive you. That is the most beautiful form of mercy. It's it's the most perfect form of mercy, uh, Paul, because there's no price. There's no shedding of blood. There is no sacrifice needed. It's just to do with your heart turning to the creator, Paul. But I'd like you to, to think about everything else that the brothers have said to you, because I think there were some profound points. We'd like to get April on. She's been waiting quite a long time. We don't want to upset her. Two weeks, Paul. Um, 
two weeks, Paul. Paul. We'll, we'll see you in two weeks' time. You have a nice evening. Goodbye. Ijaz, can you join us in two weeks' time? Basically, Paul, we're going to grill Paul on why he's a KJV onlyist. You're muted. He's, he's not going to enjoy that, but yeah, sure. I uh, know, I know he's not. Two weeks. Yeah, I think yeah, he does yeah, yeah, be on that uh, stream to to help brother Paul as well. April, yeah, it's April. You're welcome hey to stream, April. I do. Finally, I'm going to let uh, a boss um, deal with you. I'm going to relax. All right. April, um, that handbag that you have hanging in the back is that full of money? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm just Fantastic. showing off my wealth. Fantastic. So, April, what would you like to um, what would you like to say? Uh, welcome to the stream, by the way. Yeah, thanks. I've, I've been tuning in almost every week for like two months, and I, I always like get ready to go in, and then I like wuss out last minute. So, <laughs> not not a problem. I just get a bit like anxious, you know. Like but anyway. So well, the question is like, yeah. um, what is it? What do you believe? Basically, is the question. Yeah, what do you believe? So, I think a better question for me would be like, I don't have religion, so what do I have instead? Right? Would you say that's a fair ultimate well, question? I mean, I mean, if I were to ask you um, what you believe in terms of why you're here, how you're here in this world, and what your purpose is in life, this would perhaps be the most fundamental questions uh, that a person could ask you in terms of formulating um, your belief. You know, how did we get here and what are we doing here? And, and I suppose, where are we going? Um, th those would be the questions that I would ask you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm not a scientist or a philosopher. I don't have much of an academic background in those. Like sure. I took STEM subjects up until college, but then beyond that, I study music. So, sure. I, and I don't regularly check up on scientific journals and what's going on. So I'm kind of ignorant to that respect, but in my life, it doesn't really matter to me that much. I just I kind of like do what I want and it's quite like you know yeah self indulgent I guess but um the fact we can ask why are we here I mean the fact we can ask that it doesn't mean there has to be an answer to it like you're kind of presuming that there is a why mm. uh, it just seems like an assumption based based on I don't know feelings or well, I think uh, I think we like to have purpose that's kind of like a human condition kind of thing as well yeah. Well, I think I think before the why, April, the more important, qu pertinent question would be how, you see. And the thing is that um, there have been many studies that actually point towards people having a, having an intuitive, intuitive belief in a higher power. This is something that, uh, you know, you can go back and, and do your research on. But even there was a study in Oxford University that said that children are born with a propensity to actually believe in a higher power, to believe in some form of uh, cause for every effect. Um, and so I think you don't necessarily have to be um, a scientist to appreciate something that is very intuitive to, to all of us, April, which is that the universe, clearly we believe that the universe exists, that we exist. And there are only two possibilities, April, how the universe could have come into existence. It could have either come into existence with another material cause, or it would have, or it could have come into existence something that would be immaterial, some form of supernatural cause. There are only two variables here. I think that you would agree, April, that something cannot come from nothing. So it has to come from something because nothing can only produce uh, nothing. You can't have something from nothing. You would you would agree with that, April? I've had, I mean, I've heard this line of reasoning before. Um, it's just, it's, it's not, it just seems like kind of philosophical musings, you know, like it doesn't seem very solid to me. It's just, Let's say let's let's go back to what you said first. You said there's material and immaterial. Yeah. Basically, the beginning of the universe. That's what you were hinting at. Yes. Like, do we know for certain that there was this distinct beginning, or is it like the scientists' best kind of um, guess at the moment, based on the limited evidence we have? Like, I genuinely well, there, don't know. So there do is a, well, first of all, there is a consensus actually that the that there was a singularity and the universe came from that singularity. Um, now, the point and that beginning, 
uh, 14.3, 14.6 billion light years ago is the estimate the time that they've given to the beginning of the universe. Now, even if we were to argue that the universe or this matter and this energy existed, say, longer than that, we would still have to posit how that energy matter got here in the first place. I, I think to argue that it simply was here eternally and nothing brought this matter and energy into existence, I think would be an, an illogical assumption to make. And it, and it would go against one's intuition, in fact. It would simply be something that one would have to posit in order to try to deny God. But I don't think they could bring rationale into it or reasoning into it. And you see, one of the important things here, uh, April, is that when we look at the universe, the universe is contingent. And contingent means that it relies on certain uh, uh, qualities that it must possess to exist. So, you you know, you have to have, for example, hydrogen, you have to have uh, iron, and you have to have all of these different elements, and they have to be measured out very, very accurately. There are certain laws that govern the universe. And what that means is that it's the universe is contingent because it could have been rearranged into any m multitude of ways, and so it, it requires an explanation as to how it came into existence. Um, I mean, if you, for example, April, um, let's say you had a house and you had a garage next to the house. The garage was empty at nighttime. And the garage was locked. And you came in the morning and you opened your garage and there was a, a Lamborghini, let's say, sitting there. You would never posit that a complex car with its electronics and its wiring and its lights and you know all the metals and everything else shaped in the way that they were shaped or the carbon fiber for that matter it simply popped out into from thin air you would always posit through reasoning through logic even though you didn't see somebody putting the car there that somebody must have made this they must have created this vehicle and then they must have put it into my into my garage, you would never posit that it simply came from from thin air, would you? What does thin air mean? Well, it, we we recognize the term thin air as in coming from nothing, basically. This is what thin air normally is referred to. It doesn't actually refer to air or an air being yeah. thin. It, it's a term, obviously, that we use to describe coming from thin air, meaning just popped into existence, as it were. So this is like the fine tuning argument. It's not even the fine tuning because the fine tuning actually comes after. So what we're saying to you, April, is this, um, and this is what some, this is something that the Quran actually encourages us to do as well. It says, "Do you not think? Do you not ponder?" It, it, it tells the human being to think deeply about these things because if you do with an open heart and an open mind you will come to the only rational conclusion that in fact there had to be a creator that created this because without it it simply wouldn't make sense um one of the other things the quran says again uh, uh, and it's a philosophical argument uh, that is often used which is that allah says did this universe create itself so Allah is asking you the question, April, that do you think that this universe with all its infinite you know, numeration and orchestration simply came into existence, popped into existence by itself? And so just as you wouldn't expect that car to turn into, in, uh, pop up into your garage all by itself, you wouldn't expect this universe with the billions and billions and hundreds of billions or trillions of stars Okay, with all these fine-tuning, uh, you know, laws simply popping into existence from nothing, and and so it necessitates something that has the capability, the capacity to do this, to design it in that way, to tune all those uh, perimeters, parameters, uh, in that way, so that we can actually function and even exist. Okay. Um, 
I don't. <laughs> I mean, I've heard this argument like a million times before. I just don't know what to say. Um, it, what, what it is, April, I don't want to sort of corner you um, or, or, or badger you. I'm just asking you to, you know, just think, because what it is, April, I think what happens to a lot of us, we're, we're so mesmerized by uh, our worldly affairs, you know, our tele our phones, our mobile phones, the internet, Facebook, you know. We don't get time. We don't sit and think about these things carefully. But if we really truly contemplate and think about these things deeply, April, uh, God, the existence of a creator is a self-evident truth. It is something that you will be able to uh, realize, even sitting on a deserted island somewhere in some corner of the world without even interacting with anybody. You'd be able to look up at the stars at night and realize that this must have come from somewhere, something must have made this. And you will also realize that this is not within the capacity of any human being. This is something way beyond human capability or, or, or ability. And so this is why Allah says that, um, you know, people often who deny the existence of Allah, de deny the existence of God, are people who are not thinking and not contemplating and they're somehow overriding those, uh, they're overriding their fitra. Their fitra is their conscience, their, their predisposition to believe in a creator. They have to override this. It isn't natural. It's actually something that they have to work at to try to jump through those hoops to deny the existence. Because the existence of a creator is actually a self-evident truth when you look at the creation. But I'd, I'd like one of the other brothers to come in there because I've had quite a lot to say. But April, but please do come back if you want to, um, you know, argue against that. I mean, don't don't feel like you know we're, we're trying to sort of um, uh, corner you or anything. But 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 I mean, do you think that that's a strong argument and that makes sense to you? Um, I mean, it's sort of like a hypothesis, but then actually coming up with the strong enough evidence to support it. You know, I'm not so sure about that. Mm -hmm. April, so, like, April, 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 please don't say long words as if like you're going to say something profound and it's supported scientifically. It's not. All, all the hypothesis I means it's a theory and all you have as atheists is theories. Now, the problem is our theory is more probable than your theory. That's the reality. So the God hypothesis is one, one explanation for the universe. What's your explanation for the universe? Well, I don't have one. You don't have one, I know. So what do you have to posit then? You must have something. The universe is here. Where did it come from? What well, are the possibilities? I mean, I mean, there are lots of religions who have... No, forget religion. Religion's, religions, religions are relevant. Well, religions are relevant. Except Islam, right? Look, look, look. Let's understand one thing, April. Irreligion, religion is irrelevant to this conversation. Irrelevant. Yeah? Well, when I say God... Yeah, let me rephrase it. An intelligent mind behind the origination of the universe. The explanation of the universe has to be, and this is my bold claim. And if you can try and refute it, I don't mind. My bold claim is this. The science of physics, the science of biology, and the science of chemistry demonstrate categorically there has to be an explanation which is intelligent and conscious behind existence there has to be by necessity because it can't happen without it if you go to biology and you're trying to do evolution you've got to try and explain how a extra protein is formed from nothing you try to make the claim of random mutation but the probability of random mutation is absolutely astronomically out there the idea that one protein one protein can be formed based upon a random mutation, that it's going to be a um, positive change, a positive mutation. The permeations from one positive protein to negative, which will have a detrimental effect, is so profound that the odds are this basically outnumber the number of atoms in the galaxy. This is the probabilities you're working with here. This is just the science of biology. Then, then, then you come to chemistry. You've got to explain how carbon was formed from what? Now, when scientists look at it, they look at beryllium and they look at helium and they think this amounted up to make carbon, but it can't do. 
Because when they look at it, there's a massive gap. So how did you get from that to carbon? Can't explain it. It's like it came like that. Back to biology. Explain the Cambrian explosion. explosion. You're trying to explain about how this single cell organism through this astronomically uh, challenged uh, random mutation harnessed by some natural selection to become a new species. Explain the Cambrian explosion. Explain species fossil all over the world. Yeah, in different forms. Um, complex species, things that had Darwin in problems, things that Darwin said we need to find uh, ancestors to these things because where they come from? And in 150 years, there's nothing. Yeah, in the science of physics, we look at physics, we look at fine tuning, we look at electromagnetism, we look at gravity, we look at the nuclear powers, and we ask ourselves, how did this happen? Yes, fine tuning. You said fine tuning like, oh, is this the fine tuning argument? Yes, this is the fine tuning argument because this is the evidence for God you're asking for. This is, it can't happen the other way. You know, the way we have a low entropy universe goes against the whole idea of physics. We should have a chaotic universe from this big explosion, this big expansion. How have we got order? How have we got low entropy? Why are galaxies not being pulled apart? Why is everything not clumped together? Why is everything the way it is? Well, again, when you look at the probabilities of this, you're mad to, to choose this thing. You're insane. And as scientists have said, if this matter was about anything other than God, the matter would be settled in science. There's something behind the existence of the universe, the necessary thing. You can't refute it. Yeah, my advice to you, Get this book, The Return of the God Hypothesis. And what it'll do, it'll give you a history of science and how it's tried to understand this problem. So as, as my brother Abbas said nicely earlier about the static state universe, yeah? But then they discovered this background radiation, so then it can't be static. And then, so that, then they've then they seen the red shift and they realize it's expanding. So every time they had to change the hypothesis, they have to keep changing because they kept discovering new things. And now we're discovering things like DNA. We're discovering things like quantum mechanics. We have a human experience and human experience says when something is information, we need an intelligent agency behind it. Information does not come from anywhere but an intelligent agency. You can have a book, you can throw letters on the page. You need an intelligent agency to put it in correct order. If you look at the probabilities to have one sentence, 12, 12 letters long, and how many ways that sentence could not make sense. It will blow your mind. It will lit literally blow your mind, the idea, what, what you're saying. You know, the do you know what the probability of fine tuning is? This is, the prob this is what you've put your hat on. This is what you've put your hat on. I don't buy this, it's what you've done. Imagine all the atoms in the universe, right? And we get one subatomic particle and we paint it blue, right? And then we blindfold you, yeah? And then we give you the power to go anywhere in the universe to find this subatomic particle. The chances of you finding that subatomic particle are 10 billions more likely that this universe is a product of random chance. Imagine the subhanallah. This is the odds you're playing with. Like I said, if this was anything other than God, the, sat the, meta the matter is settled. And you know this idea, oh, in the future, um, we'll, you know, science will come up with an explanation. The problem you've got is the more science discovers, the more it exposes this intelligent designer. You can't escape it. And, and, and this is the reality. So I'm not talking about religion and Qur'ans or nothing like that. I'm talking about, you want to be a scientist? Be a scientist. Follow the science, follow biology, follow chemistry, follow physics. And what you're going to do, you're going to hit presuppositions that you've just got to accept have to be true. And the reasons why you have to accept they're true is because the alternative is God. But the probabilities of those things are astronomically out there. But because the alternative is an intelligent mind, a creator, a God, a conscious being, accountability, and because you reject the existence of the metaphysical, you, 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 you hold on to this ridiculous probability, mathematical equation, yeah? Just because it, it's the natural way. Listen to me, April, it's impossible.
for this universe to have begun to exist to have to exist the way it does to have for, to life to have grown the way it has there is no way on earth this is a product of random mutation when you look at random mutation you look at the probability of this protein being formed then you times it by the time life has existed 3.85 billion years i believe life has been growing on this earth there's not enough time for it to happen there simply isn't so i started this by saying i'm not a scientist no, no. I'm kind of ignorant to the subject, so... No, but this is the thing, you see, because you can start off saying you're not a scientist, but the problem is all you've got to understand this world is the scientific method. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the metaphysical? Do you believe in the supernatural? Um, I used to be really, really sceptical about those kind of things. I would say I'm kind of agnostic about the idea of, like, something creating the universe, but it, that then could be so many more things. And your religion okay. is one of those what, many things. What can it be other than an intelligent agency? What else could it be? What? Well, yeah, but that intelligent agency could be many, many things. Could be many, many things. Well, let's determine what the intelligent agency is and what the qualities that in intelligent agency must possess. So the first thing this, this intelligent agency must possess is what? It needs to be the necessary thing, the necessary being. It needs to have always existed. Okay. We can infer this because if it didn't always exist, then that means it would need something to exist, which means we need another necessary thing. Then Occam's razor would say, well, we count out all these other intermediary and we get to the one we're talking about here. What so we have I a see? universe that is, exists that couldn't exist any other way. What we have I life on it? Earth that couldn't exist any other way. It what, just couldn't. What if, what if I stated an idea that's like, our, our universe was created by, say, this really super advanced race that exists. Where did this super advanced race come from? And, and then they have their them? own god that created them. So this god, is, is this uh, the necessary being? I guess so, yeah. Right, so there's, yeah, there's god then. I don't mind. I don't mind how you want to get to it. You can, you yeah, can fly not aliens, you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can do what you like. I don't really care as long as we get a necessary being. And then we can okay. work backwards again. I mean, yeah, I'm going to ask you now to support seems, your hypothesis. That seems reasonable. It seems reasonable that some alien race no, created no, 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 our universe. No. Where were our, was, did our universe exist not what I before meant. this alien race? No, no, what? The oh, idea you're saying the aliens planted us on Earth? So, like, this, this, like, super, you know, advanced race just created this universe, I don't know, just for fun or to study, see how we would evolve and whatever. But then that universe that they live in had a... Which universe yeah, is that? Our that... universe or another universe? I don't know, another one. I don't know how it works. I'm just making it up. But... I know you're just making it up. See, I'm not interested in making it up. I'm interested in hypotheses that work. You can't just make it up. I want that's, a falsification that's for an it. an explanation that meets the criteria that you've set. Well, give me a falsification test for it. Well, there is. I don't know. So how can you posit it then? Well, because it meets the criteria but, 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 of what you said. But said. also, April, April, the, the, see, the thing is to... When we look at the universe, April, we have more stars in the universe than grains of sand on Earth, on every beach on Earth. More stars in the universe than grains of sand on every beach on Earth. And in fact, some people are saying now that with the Hubble telescope, uh, they believe that there's probably a hundred times more stars than they thought that there were. So now you'd, you'd be talking about a hundred Earths and every beach on a hundred Earths, every grain of sand would represent a star in the universe. And what you're saying, April, is that some alien race managed... I'm not saying it. that. I, that's not what I meant. That's not the point I was making. Okay, One second, April. I think we've got somebody that. to support you. Uh, Carbon Craft, I've seen you mathing off in the comments with your nonsense. Come and help April out. So hiding in the comment section. I mean, a April, would you agree that... Thousands and thousands of wrongs. He means trillions and trillions of wrongs. April, would you, would you agree that to believe in a higher being, an intelligent being that created the universe is a very reasonable assumption to arrive at? It's a good, like, starting point. It's a sort of philosophical starting point, isn't it? 
Yes. And, and, yeah. and also, April, would you, would you accept it's quite reasonable and logical that if God did create us, then he would perhaps disclose to us what our purpose was Maybe. because we wouldn't Maybe expect yeah. God to simply create us without purpose because we ourselves, for example, do everything for some purpose. We don't just do things without any purpose, right? Um, so would we expect intuitively, logically, rationally, this creator to have perhaps contacted us in some way to inform us about why we're here, um, how we got here, uh, what our purpose of life is, and perhaps where we're heading once we die, would that be a reasonable assumption to, to arrive at? I don't think so. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's just like an assumption. Yes, I agree. Like, oh, probably, I don't know. Kind of okay. seems like it well, that way. But you'd say it was a reasonable assumption, right? Um, I, remember what I asked you. I'm 50 fit, like it could be either. Like, I, I, can't I, said, really I said, I said, if there, there is a creator, if, and I emphasize the point if, then we would expect that that creator has made contact with us because otherwise there would be no point to just creating people for absolutely no reason, right? So I'm well, saying we need to question God, you know, if that's sorry? what he wants to do, then that's what he does. Sorry, April, what was that? Here's another one. Sorry, here's another one that might be able to support you. Lickety split. Hi again, another another atheist hiding in the comment section. Come and support April then. I, I, I love your science in the comments. April, and this is how we actually, April, when we look at the Quran, for example, and we study the Quran, um, and we scrutinize the Quran in terms of, you know, uh, going through all of its challenges and its prophecies and everything else. What we do, April, is that we end up um, with the only reasonable conclusion that we can actually make, which is that this book, the Quran, could not have originated from any human capacity or capability. Now, there are lots of reasons as to why we arrive at that conclusion. It's a very multifaceted uh, evidences that support the Quran being divine. Um, I'm just asking, have you, ha, because you said you're agnostic, you, you're not, you're not particularly, uh, perhaps you haven't made up your mind either way. Um, well, to me, I would go further and say it doesn't matter to me that much. It doesn't matter. What's going to happen to you when you die, April? Well, I don't know. So why doesn't it matter then? Why don't you care? This life is just, temporary. This life is temporary. You, what are you going to live? 60, 70, 80 years? Then what? What's going to happen to you? Hopefully not. <laughs> then what? What's going to happen to you? See, look, look, look at that. Look at your answer there. Hopefully not. You're not even happy in your joke. life now. That was a joke. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, what's going to okay. happen to you when you die? I, I don't know. Or don't you care? Not really. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit curious. If, if anything does happen, I'll find out. But I don't know. But what if it's too late for you then? What if the warning's already come and you've ignored the warning? Don't you owe yourself a duty that if this warning is true, you should test it and click and see whether or not this is true or not? So the warning just from Islam, you mean? Yes. And not Christianity. Yeah. Not Christianity. Should I tell you why? Or Hinduism or... Should I tell you why? Sports? Okay. Because Jesus didn't come for you. The only man in history who said he came for the whole world was Muhammad. Peace and blessings upon him. No other prophet made that claim. All the other messengers of God came for their people specifically. Only one said he came for the whole world, which was Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. So to listen to a messenger not sent to you is ridiculous. You listen to the messenger sent to you. So that's why I say Islam, yes. And we believe all the prophets and messengers were Muslims anyway. We believe yeah, yeah. Islam just means submission and surrender to God. So it's not like Islam is like one religion and Christianity is another religion. There's only one religion, which is Islam. Jesus, his religion was Islam. Moses, his religion was Islam. Abraham, his religion was Islam. Why? Because they all submit and surrendered their will to that of God. And the one who does that is a Muslim. So we believe all the prophets of God from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, all of Muhammad, uh, John the Baptist, all of them their religion was Islam. So it's not like this is a new thing. Christians was the word used to mock those people who followed this Christ. It was, a, it was, it was like, it was like, for example, the black people being called the N word, adopting it as their identity. 
that's what it was. It was a mocking word. It was something to abuse them with, to ridicule them with. And they adopted that as their name. Jesus didn't call himself a Christian. Moses didn't call himself a Jew. These religions don't exist. Moses, what was Jesus's? He was of the way. Yeah, which is what? The way of God, worshipping one God. Jesus worshipped God. Abraham worshipped God. All the prophets, every single prophet said the same thing. There's only one God and worship him. That was the message of every prophet. Moses said it. Jesus said it. Muhammad said it. Peace be upon him and all of them. Abraham said it. There's only one God. Worship him. So this idea, oh, this religion, that religion. Yeah, if you want to believe in monkey army religions, ask yourself the source of the religions. There are many different ideas, Zeus and all this kind of stuff. But you can eliminate them very, very easily. And you'll come down to what makes sense. Because in your mind, when you do the science, you're not thinking of this God and that God doing this and him fighting that God. You're thinking of one entity behind the universe. That's what makes sense. That's what the science leads to. Because if there's more than one God, then we'd have chaos in the universe, which we don't have. So science points us to the existence of an intelligent mind behind the universe. And then we should, so we should look for a religion that marries up with that concept. So any religion that says monkey God, this God, that, forget that, forget that. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about religions that will identify with this idea of what we believe a creator should be. As soon as you tell me this creator is uh, a, a son and he has to come and he has to die and you've lost me, you've lost me, you've lost me completely. For me, this nullifies Christianity. As soon as you tell me a religion where you have to be of a particular ethnicity to belong to it, you've lost me. So we can easily rule out all these other religions like this, like I did. I wasn't a Muslim 20 years ago. I, I had all the religions in front of me. I was like you. I was agnostic. I didn't know what religion was true or not. I, I was atheist, then agnostic, then deist, then theist, then mm, where do I go? And I looked at the alternatives and none of them married up to my what I believed. Then I look at Islam. Now, maybe the teachings of Islam scare you, April. Maybe you think they're going to inhibit your lifestyle in some way. Maybe that's what is your, is your nafs and your desires. Maybe your mind is thinking right now, flipping neck, this makes sense. What these guys are saying to me is mashing up my brain. And when Hamza says atheist minds are in a box more than the Christians, he's actually telling the truth. Because at least a Christian can concede there's a God. You guys don't even get there, even though the science leads to it. Because there's things going on here, April. You've got your mind that can accept it. You've got your heart and you've got your desires as something else. Now, when I before I became Muslim, my mind accepted Islam, but my heart and desires didn't. And it wasn't until I nearly died that I thought, wow, what am I holding on to? This is the reality. But you can't get to the religions until you get past the idea of whether there's a God or not. You've got to, in your mind, believe this universe cannot be self-created. It cannot be self-existing. It cannot be self-organizing. It cannot be self-designing. It just couldn't have happened scientifically. If you like science, it couldn't have happened. Um, April, like this, um, we have we, we're human beings. We have emotions. We have feelings. Um, and like sometimes our rationale might concede something because, you know, what we said today is the truth, April. No. I know you've got no response. Okay. You know, telling me aliens with their own God, this tells me you got nothing. That's what it tells me. You got nothing. Anyway, look, April, we don't want to feed, we don't want you to come across that we're sort of badgering you. I mean, no, April knows me. Th th this is this is more of a, a passionate concern and advice to you that just think about these things carefully um, and, and contemplate about these things carefully. And I think the other thing is that, you know, we often do say to people who are agnostic like yourself, um, pray, pray to God and say, you know, if you exist, if you exist, then guide me, then help me. Um, uh, sorry, Brother Ijaz, do you want to just add something to that? Why is, why yeah, is I, comments that people are coming? I, I just want like five minutes with April, if, if that's okay, April, just to explain maybe some background, because I understood your point about aliens and their God, and would we then worship their God? Could I have just five minutes with you? I know it's late, brothers. Can you be yeah, yeah, sure, that? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, April, um, I've done this exercise with others before. Hopefully you can do it along with me. And I want you to stop me at a point in which you think something is unreasonable. 
My first question, I, I, you will to do this exercise with me, April. Sure, yeah. Okay, brilliant. So you can turn off your camera if you want to, because I think you said you get a little bit anxious sometimes. It, it's fine with me. Um, uh, so to just clarify, let's begin with something. Do you experience time as if in one moment you have two hands or three hands, or has it consistently been since your birth you've had two hands? I am not always conscious about that, but when I'm using them, I guess, too, yeah. Has anyone ever said to you, April, you know, last night you had three hands, this morning you have four? Never, no? No. Okay. So the way that we experience time is linearly, right? It, it's always going forward, never backwards in a straight line. The Quran brings forward an argument. It says, had there been other gods other than Allah, then there would be chaos, meaning that one God would do one thing to you and another God would do something else to you. So this violates the second law of logic, the law of non-contradiction. So for Muslims, our basis begins here. There can only be one God. So when you ask the question, well, you know, if a God exists, if a necessary being exists, he can take multiple forms. We don't know. Well, no, we can use logic to whittle it down. So this would almost necessarily uh, remove every other faith which is not monotheistic from contention. And then we say, okay, but that still gives us Judaism, it still gives us Islam, it still even gives us Christianity. But then we run into the same problem with Christianity. They believe that each person in the Godhead has a will and that each person in the Godhead, because they have a will, it means that none of them are sovereign, which means that they can undo and redo each other's commands and authority. So on that basis, reasonably, we can't consider Christianity. And in any case, even if we put that reasoning aside, the fact that God said to God, let your will be done and not mine, still tells us that there is at least one will and one God, one way or the other. So that only gives us Judaism and Islam. But then Judaism has an interesting claim in the book of Genesis that God regretted. He regretted because humans committed so many sins and broke so many laws. But if God in you know, the philosophy of religion and even in Islam is all-knowing, there is nothing which God does not know, then God can't regret because if God knows everything, he can't make an incorrect decision because he was unaware of the consequences which would follow. So now this already eliminates Christianity and Judaism because they both share the same book. Then that leaves Islam. And so your job, April, should there, therefore be, let me critique who God says he is in Islam. What are, what is, what are, what are his names and his attributes? What, how does he carry about his affairs? How does he teach us? How does he inform us about him? That is where it should go. I'm not saying don't investigate all other religions. By all means, do so. But I think that we have a rational, reasonable, and logical basis to start off with Islam, with the exclusion, to the exclusion rather of the others. Have anything I, sorry, has anything I said to you sounded unreasonable or illogical at this point, April? No. So my advice is there is one chapter in the Quran it's only 21 words long, four verses. It's one, chapter 112. I'm going to, if, if you brothers can give me two more minutes, God willing, two minutes, April, tell me where you would disagree and why you would disagree. But does that sound reasonable to you? Okay. Okay. So it starts off by saying, say he is God, one and indivisible. Does that sound odd to you? Anything that you would disagree with there? No. Okay. Now, the reason one we already run through this is because of the law of non-contradiction. The second one, God the sustainer who is needed by all, but he, but he who needs nothing. Does that sound odd to you or illogical? He needs nothing. Yeah. Meaning, God does not need me to ex exist in order for him to be God. God does not need something to give him his authority. He's eternally had this authority. Well, need is like a very human kind of concept mm -hmm. and you say but, Allah isn't human so it's kind of irrelevant to even say that I guess but, but yeah but then there were humans who believed that God is a human and he has needs he yeah, has not, desires not Muslims right yeah but remember the Quran is for everyone to be aware of who God is so it has to specify even in the little details right does that okay. make sense now yeah yeah it continues 
he has never had offspring, nor is he the offspring of someone else. Meaning he is not created, and he's not the creation of someone else. Well, he created Adam and Eve, right? Yeah, but he's not the creation of someone else, nor is he himself created, meaning that oh, someone right, yeah. created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Yep. And then the very last verse, and there is nothing comparable or like him, meaning there is nothing equal to him, greater than him, nothing has his attributes and qualities. So for example, I can be merciful, but I'm not as merciful as God. I can be knowledgeable, but I can't be as knowledgeable as God. So there is nothing equal or superior than him. It is him and him alone. He is the ultimate sovereign. He's in a class all by himself. I can't compare to him. Okay. So of these four verses, these make up the sincerity of the Islamic faith. The core idea is that each and every Muslim must believe in when they think of who God is. Do any of these things sound illogical? unreasonable to you in any meaningful way well they don't contradict each other if that's what you mean yeah but do you find any issues with what it says god should be like then um well you said god doesn't need anything mm -hmm. but then i don't i don't understand the point of the universe being created mm -hmm. other than need okay so or god, boredom or something no but god does not need us to exist but rather he has created it simply because he can and so because he can, he did so. And that's it. And God has shown us love and grace and mercy by giving us the opportunity to exist so that in the end we may know him. The Quran says, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From God we come and to him we will return. The whole point of Islam is that one day we will be able not just to, to, to believe in God, but that once we believe in him, we will get to see him and the reward for that belief. So God has had mercy on us. God is not some, uh, you know, being, you know, some people tend to think of God as why would he care about us? Well, intelligent beings are loving, caring and merciful, not capricious. God didn't simply press a button and we popped into existence. As Muslims, we responsibly believe that each and every person God has chosen individually to create. So you, me, April, Hamza, God chose to create us. And not for fun or for games, but rather because he has created us, I get to have happiness. I get to have joy. I get to have pleasure. I get to have pain. But there will come a day when I will have no pain. And this for me is how beautiful God is. That is why at least 113 times in the Quran minimum, he says he's the Lord of mercy and the Lord of grace. And I believe that. So you gave you gave God another human attribute, which is love. You say no, God I, loves us. Ah, but April, I said God's attributes are unlike our attributes. I can love, but I can't love like God's love. I can have mercy, but I can never be as merciful as God. That's the difference. So it's like it's a comparative thing. It's it's, it's an still indication. Love and mercy. It it gives us an idea of how we can relate to God, but not how we can compare to God. If that makes sense. Um. Okay. Why do you disagree, April? Well, I mean, it all makes sense within itself. Yeah. I just don't believe that your religion is true. Yeah, but that's the point, April. If Islam is internally consistent to the exclusion of all the other faiths which aren't, then Islam says, look at me, investigate me, take a look at me. And that's what we're asking you to do. Because you asked the question, why why Islam? So we're giving you the reasons. Well, why, why don't you believe Islam is true, April? Well, I obviously I haven't researched it a ton, and I so don't think. So, what have you researched that's convinced you Islam is not true? I I don't really look at it that way. You just said not... I don't believe your religion is true, so you must have a reason to believe that. So, what is your reason? I don't know how I'm supposed to answer that. Well, if I said I don't believe something, it's because there's reasons behind what I'm saying. Well, I, I, see, I, I just I, I see religion. I, I can't. I can't look. When you say I don't believe something, it means you're saying I don't accept this is true. Why? I mean, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm very skeptical. It's just kind of like my nature. Like just, fair the enough. reason. Is there any the reason I don't. Can I? I'm sorry. You've talked a lot. Can I talk for a little bit, please? Go on. 
three. Just answer I, the, as long as you're answering the question, that's fine. Kind of. <laughs> so the reason I don't believe the way I don't believe in your religion is the same way, exactly the same way. I also don't believe. Don't talk to me about other religions. Why? Because it's, it's got nothing to do with my religion. My religion cannot be reconciled with any other religion. So if you believed any other religion was true, you would reject my religion based upon that fact. If my religion is true, everything else is false by default. So I'm with you because you reject wow. the others. So, so I, I need to adopt another religion before I can reject all of them. No, 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 no. You have to tell me why you reject my religion. I just, um, well, you've kind of cornered me because you say I can't talk about other religions. So I, there's no need I to because you're telling me why you don't believe it. it. Just tell me why you don't believe Islam is true. There's nothing specific about it that I can I can give you right now. I mean, it's more of a broad. Ask me why I don't believe Christianity is true. I, I know why you don't. Why? Um, why don't I believe Christianity is true? Because your religion is true, and there can only be one God. No, but why don't I believe Christianity is true? Ijaz has just told you. I don't believe God regrets. I think I, I think the nature of God is all knowing. Yeah, the idea that a God is. Uh, has to come down and for, to forgive us and this that I just don't buy the nonsense I don't buy the the, the New Testament which is the source of information for the Christian religion I don't buy it I can see okay, well, hands up. You, you have answers for that why don't you believe in the monkey army for the Hindus then yeah exactly well I believe in the Hanuman and the monkey army what's all that about what is that based upon the uh, idea uh, that God uh, had his uh, wife uh, kidnapped uh, and uh, one second about one second about yeah so there's reasons why I reject everything. You can, you, you can ask me each religion why I reject it. I can tell you. But the reason is, it's, I'll, I'll explain how it works. Um, even though I say if Islam is true, everything else is false. What that means for me then is, because I know everything else is false because Islam is true, I can find the weakness in everything else. I'll find the weakness in Hinduism. I'll find you the weakness in Sikhism. I'll find you the weakness in atheism. I'll find you the weakness in Buddhism because there's no connection to God. I'll find you the weakness in Judaism. I'll find you the weakness in Christianity. I'll find you the weakness in everything. I challenge you to find one weakness in Islam. Just one. To reject it as true. Because the reality here is, April, you, you're in no position. You should be agnostic about Islam. I am. No, you didn't. You said you reject it. Okay, I was agnostic about it. Um... Oh, now, I what, 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 what I can it. do for you, I can make you reject every other religion. I can show you all the weaknesses and everything else. Well, not every then, I invite, then I invite you back to Islam and then find no, the weakness in Islam. Every, every religion, it will, I guarantee you. That's why we believe Islam is the truth exclusive to the others. Uh, guys, I'm going to just step in there. Uh, April, we are coming to the close. We're actually already 15 minutes over, but uh, in fact, 45 minutes over. But April, uh, are you based in the UK? Would you like us to send you out maybe a Quran? Would you be interested to perhaps uh, read it, an English uh, uh, translation of the Quran? I have one already. You do. Uh, it would be, look, April, it would be nice to engage with you, um, um, you know, and, and just discuss these things. Perhaps if you preferred uh, not to necessarily do it on a live stream, we would respect that. But uh, all, all we're sort of asking you to do, April, is just sort of think about these things deeply, contemplate about these things. Um, and, and I think it's quite reasonable when Hamza says to you, why do you reject something? Uh, we we reject things on the basis that they're not rational or logical or reasonable to accept. And the fact that, April, you haven't done uh, even a cursory investigation of Islam and come up with even a single point as to why you would reject Islam, uh, I would respectfully say that that's not a reasonable uh, stance to take. But as I say, I don't want to badger you, but... Uh, the, co the copy of the Quran that we normally send out is this um, copy, which is the clear Quran. And it's, it tends to be a much, um, a much better um, uh, English translation. Uh, we, we, we all pretty much use that, uh, that copy. If you, if you don't have that, we would be more than happy to send that out to you. Uh, also, April, if you... Can I send you one of these, April? Um, okay, sure. Well, you're going to yeah. pay for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll absolutely. cover it. We'll we'll cover it, April. As long as you read it. Okay. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you, we'll if you even send you a message, me on, you message me on we'll Hamza's den, Hamza. if you like. Yeah. Yeah. You can um, message on Hamza's den, or you can message us at EF Dower 
um, um, uh, at gmail.com, whichever you prefer. It's not a problem. You can that's uh, our yeah. email address there, yeah. or you can or you can email Hamza, and we'll we'll send that out to you, and we'll send you out a free Quran as well. Because what what it is, April, one of the what, one of the very important things for us all to consider is that if you're an if you're an atheist or agnostic, or you're a believer that life after death has an eternal an eternal cause so if you're an atheist or, or ag perhaps agnostic you might believe that there's nothing that happens death is the end which is to, guys come on guys i'm just uh, showing my books which is which is still uh, which is still um an eternal reality okay of nothingness and if we believe that there is something that comes after death there is also an eternal consequence of death so either one has an eternal consequence now i think humbly i would say that it's very important for us to um at least give it serious thought as to which eternal consequence we're likely to explore or or experience once we've died because eternity is an awfully long time right so um um but do email us um um uh, april and we'll certainly get back to you with those things but thank you so much for coming on and i hope that uh, our our passion of perhaps explaining the religion hasn't seemed like we're sort of badgering you or bullying you that wasn't our intention if it came across that way or you felt that way please accept our sincerest apologies because it's not supposed to be that way so i hope you forgive us if, if that's how you felt but with all um um, you know, with, with concern and love for humanity, we would hope that you would contact us and we would certainly get back to you with some literature and free information. And it's all completely free of charge. You don't have to pay for a thing. Yeah, I will. All right. Thanks for coming on then. Have, right, a, have a nice you. evening or morning. Morning. <laughs> yeah. Right. You Take have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. We've got one just, more guest. We're just, bring, uh, on. just bring him on um, and we'll just have him on first next time. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's very, very late now, guys. Um, uh, yeah. From atoms to us. Hi there, can you hear me? Hi there, mate. Hi, Hi there. You are all right. yeah, Not too bad. Um, can you just speak a little bit into the microphone? Stop speaking through a sock. We can't sort of hear you very clearly. Um, Why are you whispering? Any better? Oh, any better? Thank God, much better. yes. Much better. Yes. Oh, okay. I just unplugged my earphones. That's all. It oh, is. wow. You sounded like Beacon of the Muppets. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. My own belief um, is that, you know, I'm not like a trained scientist or anything like that. And I'm, I'm an IT person. And, uh, you know, you got an I interest in history, amateur in interest in history. I have an amateur interest in science. Um, I find science very interesting. Uh, I think the scientific endeavor um is is probably the most realistic thing i can think of at the moment um or the most closest to the truth if i if, if that's one way to put it um i haven't really found a reason not to believe it All right. um, can, I, can, I, so, can i can i agree with you yeah but can i say you've not gone far enough okay because if you can follow the the, the yellow brick road of science to oz yeah, yeah, you will come to God. Yeah, because what you're going to realize is you're going to hit a presupposition that you're just going to have to accept on faith. And the yeah. reason you have to accept that faith is the alternative is God. And the probability of that particular presupposition being true is so astronomically bad. Yeah, it, 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 it's blind faith. Um, and, the, and and you can follow the yellow brick road. I just said it earlier to April. You can follow yeah. the yellow brick road of uh, biology. Uh, I see your name from atom to us. Tell me where yeah. the atom came from. See, here's the thing. Yeah. You see, you're already playing with what God has created. Atom. Okay. Where did yeah. the atom come from? Where did the single yeah. cell come from? Where did yeah. the protein come from? Yeah. Where did that I mean, come from? From a sterile this, universe. So what? This, I'm saying, no, just just listen. Yeah. Just, I'll, let you, I'll let you speak. No problem. But what okay. I'm saying is. So if you follow the yellow brick road of uh, biology, you'll yeah. come to a presupposition that is so absurd. You really, you'll ask yourself, why do I believe this thing? Because the alternative is you have to believe in God. That's the okay. problem. Yeah. If you follow the yellow brick road of chemistry, you'll come to a presupposition you have to accept, which is so absurd 
because the alternative means you have to believe in God. Uh, and when I say God, don't think of some bearded guy in the clouds. Yeah. yeah. Think think of an intelligent mind, intelligent creative force or um, necessary being um, that's the cause of everything. Yeah. Think in that way. Don't think of uh, Michelangelo's or whatever it is. You get me? Don't think of God. When I say God, don't start thinking of white men with beards, please. When I just say God, I'm talking about an intelligent agency behind everything. So when okay. you follow the yellow brick road of chemistry, you will conclude that the presupposition is so absurd, there must be some intelligent design behind it. When you follow the yellow brick road of physics and you come to, like I say, to electromagnetism, to, to the uh, gravity, to the nuclear powers, you look at the Big Bang, you look at the expansion of the universe, you look at fine tuning, you look at um, entropy and all of these things, you look the presupposition you're going to have to accept at that point, again, is so absurd because the alternative is an intelligent mind. That's it. So you okay. think you, and what, what's happening, what, what, what science is doing. Yeah. You're starting from a point which is a point above the presupposition. So you're okay. starting with something. Okay. But you can't explain well, that something. Right, go on. This is, this is, yeah, this is, this is the point um, I'm making about it. And I'm, I'm just thinking about it myself because I haven't read it anywhere. You know, you get a number of facts and you try to draw a conclusion from that. Yeah. And from my point of view, and you're perfectly, ha you know, I'm perfectly happy to listen to why you think I'm wrong. Uh, but my point of view at this point is that um, when you talk about religion, you have the Forget Quran religion. or you have. Okay. Forget religion. Forget religion. Okay. So science, science's starting point is we do not know. No, that's the yeah. problem. No, it's not you do no. not know. No, 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 one second, one second, one second. Science's starting position is always, we do not know. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's and not. And then we try to work it out because... Exactly, exactly. Is, so what do you think the presupposition is, no, is? There is, there uh -huh, is no, uh, okay. there is no written manual. There is no uh -huh. written guide. Yeah? There is. You have to work out what is going on and what explains... Uh -oh, the, okay, you the, don't the, understand the scientific method, my friend. Us. You started this conversation saying you're not a scientist. That I'm is not. demonstrated by you, you don't understand the scientific method. Do you know what presupposition is? No. All right. So it's a start point that you can't yeah. demonstrate is true. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you're just assuming this is the way it was. So, for example, um, you assume random mutation can cause new proteins that can then be harnessed by natural selection to create new uh, organs and, and new new cells. Yeah, the presupposition is uh, random mutation can can cause a new protein to form. Yeah, right. Through it, through mutation, that's right. the presupposition. The probability right. of that is so astronomically bad. But the thing it's is, ridiculous. no, no. But you're you're saying that. But are you a biologist? No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm second? I'm not I'm not a biologist. So, but are you All a right. biologist, my, my friend? So the way, to, the way, the way, the way, to... the way, the way, the way I see this, yeah, yeah is yeah. that uh, the way I listen, see... you're going to come look, look, the point you're making is so absurd. Do I need to be an, a, a biologist to quote what a biologist said? No, no, this is the point right, right. I'm trying to make. See this, book? this is the point I'm, this is the point listen, I'm listen trying to, to make. Listen to yeah. me, listen to me, listen, you, you know that? Okay. Just listen to me, please. I'm listening. You see this book? Yeah. Read it. Okay. I'm telling you, write it down. What I put here: Return of the God Hypothesis. Okay. Trust me, read it, and okay. you'll realize how you've been hoodwinked by the atheist neo-atheist movement. No, no, okay. Can I can I say something? Yeah, is all right. As long as you don't okay. ask me, am I a biologist? Because I'll say no. <laughs> no, 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 no. What what I think, my personal opinion, why you know this this is what this show is about is my own beliefs, and you guys want to challenge it, yeah? Yeah. So my own belief here is that. You should never believe one person, one biologist, one scientist, right? You should take the consensus, the body of opinion, yeah? Right. So that's what you should do. So biology, yeah, is obviously run by thousands and hundreds of thousands of scientists, right? My and friend, the consensus, my friend, my friend. No, the no, consensus, you, you, haven't, you haven't got a clue what you're talking about. The consensus, yeah, is that certain things happen biology works in a certain way and that's what you I have haven't to got go a clue on. what you're talking about we stop talking you don't know what you're talking about i'm telling you, you, you right now yeah the presupposition of biology 
is that random mutation is what forms a protein that's harnessed by natural selection to enable evolution, right? That's the scientific, that's what they're on. And it's a presupposition that they cannot demonstrate, yeah? Science has cannot explain fine tuning. Okay. The probabilities of fine tuning are so ridiculously bad. To take okay. it, you must be a madman. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's a fact. Chemistry. Carbon cannot just appear from nothing. It's made up of um, different chemicals. But this is this is what I'm saying, right? You're talking that a carbon Nobody appears from nothing. Got, my friend. What's, your there's, there's What's your name? There's strong. There's a strong scientific theory. What's your name? What's your name? Sorry. What's your name? Pardon. Harpal. Huh? Harpal. 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 H A R P A. Harpal. Okay, Harpal. Just listen to me, please. Yeah. You're talking about things that you don't know. You're you're saying thousands of biologists. We're talking about the the, the test, the the the, um, the experiments, and all of these things that have determined these facts. This is where you are. Richard Dawkins will concede random mutation is what is required. For natural selection to occur, but random okay. mutation cannot account for new proteins to have um, appeared on the scale in the time that was available. Can't do it. Why do, you, why do you think Richard Dawkins says evolution doesn't disprove God? The reason Richard Dawkins needs to say that because he knows God is required for evolution to even begin. Just as your yeah. name says, from atom to us. How did you yeah. get from nothing to the atom? Okay, I need to handle one top topic at a time because we're jumping from biology to atoms to physics, constantly interchanging between the two. Can we stick to you mentioned carbon? We don't know yeah, where it comes from. The carbon, though. Go on. So, tell me about um, carbon. All right, I could just tell you that there is a clear scientific trail of how atoms became into being. Yeah, really, what's a scientific trail? Yeah, if you look at the consensus of all scientists, right? What, what is, is the that consensus? It? Who said it? Yeah, the scientific body, and not many people are challenging it, right, is that you had the so-called Big Bang, yeah? And within that Big Bang, yeah, before that, they have uh, certain stages that they have proven because they, no, they need to find they haven't. They haven't. You're waffling. I can't have this conversation. You know what you're talking about. You're just waffling. Nothing's been proven. It's hypothesis. Yeah. It's it, it has it has evidence right they have you have a theory you have a a, a hypothesis is that a hypothesis is an idea yeah it's a theory based upon ex on, on tests no, no. and experiments yes uh, hamza hamza go with me for a second go with me for I a can't. second yeah i can't it, it's it's late then how, you're waffling. what's the point of the show what's the point of the show if you don't want to listen is, yeah? I'll tell you what the point of the show is, yeah? If you're going to yeah. talk about things, know what you're talking on. You came on, your opening statement was, I'm not a scientist. I'm yes. quoting scientist after scientist after scientist after scientist. You're giving me some abstract group of scientists. You're saying things that are not true. It's just, that's it. I'm saying that the scientific body, yeah, scientific is of the consensus. Body? Hmm? What did the scientific body say? The phys the, the 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 top physics guys of the world, yeah, hey, the top scientists, right, agree a big bang happened, yeah, right. Okay, so they've also gone a step further and said there what was the conditions before the big bang, the inflation. No, they, they don't know. No, they haven't. They, they haven't. Stop the it. Have you heard about the inflation theory? Oh, please, you're doing okay. nothing. I can't uh, do with it. Now, have you heard about the inflation theory? Uh, Harpel, Harpel. Yes. Um, uh, brother, me. brother the, th the thing here is this. Yeah. When, when we say that I use science to gauge my reality. Yeah. Uh, th there's no issue with doing science to learn about um, our existence as it as it is today in terms of how we interact with the world or how the world interacts with us. <sighs> Of course, okay. science is, we see science as a mercy uh, from God because we believe that all knowledge disseminates comes from God, including science, basically. In, in yeah. fact, the scientific method was invented by uh, the Islamic um, uh, you know, empire. Uh, yeah. and the, the, you know, of observation, experimentation, and what have you, right? Now, the point, okay. the, the point Harpal, is this. Science can explain to us why things work the way they do 
but science has limitations and those limitations is that science cannot deal with the metaphysical reality if it exists right if it science, exists that's right exactly so science deals with the physical realities of how we see, how things are now now the point of <clears throat> how do we arrive at a metaphysical um uh, reality by using science well we can't because science deals in observations and experimentations and the metaphysical is that which we cannot experience or we can see okay so so the point is harper what we have to do is we have to use reason logic and reason yeah. we used we use perhaps a deductive methodology or method so yeah. when we look at the big bang you accept that it, there's so there's fairly high consensus that the universe began with a big bang with a singularity yes um now as far, far as i'm aware yes. the universe began with the big bang yes. Pri prior to the big bang there were explanations they needed and they formulated the inflation theory yeah, yeah. the inflation theory predicted certain um, conditions that needed observations those observations were confirmed further down and this is what i'm saying how scientists works right you've you don't know no, what how, how, okay let, yeah. let, let's 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 for argument's sake agree with your inflation theory your your, yeah. your 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 assumption therefore is that the universe that we have today was born yeah. out of this inflation theory right yeah okay what was the inflation theory born out of uh prior to that no one knows Okay, and what would what and what was that? Um, uh, what did that originate from? Wherever well, that was, th that's where it stops. Okay, so, so, so no, when no, I say no, sorry, no, I'll no. just clarify what I what I meant by that. Right, yeah. when I say that's where it stops, I meant that's where, far as our understanding stops. Exactly, we do exactly. not have. We can speculate, yeah, as a yeah. human species. Yeah. We can speculate loads of things, yeah, yeah. but we cannot say for certain. Which model of inflation yeah. theory I'm are you referring to? I'm just, I'm just no, 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 no. Let's pin half a second. Which yeah. version, of, which model of inflation theory are you referring to? Uh, I don't know how many models there are out there. How many are there? Which, which one is true? No, no. How many are there? I don't even know. There's several models. I know you don't know. That's the thing. Yeah. Is you so think so one, I'm asking you, one how, many are, how many are there out there, oh, Hamza? There's quite a few, and um, you can see how they've been refuted. No, yeah. they haven't been refuted, Hamza. I oh. really don't know. I'm I'm happy for you to provide me that evidence instead right. of saying. I'm, I'm going to make it easy for you. Just read the flipping book. Okay. Get yourself a book. Read something. Gain yourself some knowledge. Realize you're wrong. Humble yourself and realize. Well, I came on and say I'm not a scientist. Then I'm talking like I'm a scientist. When I'm read, I have read the, virtually half this book, covering all the Big Bang and the Goldilocks universe and expansion and such. Yeah, and I'm quoting. I've gone from all of the, you know, from Isaac Newton to Einstein. Up, to, up, we're up to, uh, you know, um, you know, Dawkins and his claims and Darwin and all this stuff. Hamza, you're repeating yourself. Them, You've said this already. Them, gone through all of them yeah gone through the the claims of um, well-known astronomers who basically well, there was one astronomer who was an atheist and when he did his observations and he was to speech at a conference he shocked everyone by saying i can't hold on to this idea that there isn't a, an a intelligent designer behind the universe and he shocked everyone i want you to just read the book man gain some knowledge you're speaking from ignorance and it's embarrassing no, and it's insulting. Well, you're saying you're you're saying it's embarrassing, but I'm not embarrassed. It's embarrassing because I'm what you're saying is uh, Hamza, no, I'm, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Hamza, Hamza, yeah? I'm not embarrassed to admit to the facts of what it's, I don't it's know. Pathetic. That's a normal. Oh, look, look, that's look, look. A, Sorry, mate. Our show's bigger than this. Our show's bigger than this. You come on waffling about you. You admit you don't know about the topic. You're not a scientist. They are telling all these scientists they're wrong. It's an insult to our channel. Sorry, Abbas. I'm not taking that crap. He muted. Okay, uh, is he gone? I hope so. He's still there. No, he's still, he's still there. No, he's gone now. Oh, okay. 
Uh, guys, we're going to have to call it a, a day now because it's like 1.08 in the morning. Uh, Dai Lance, uh, sorry, but we're not going to be able to get you on because it's like 1.08 a.m. and we're already an hour over the stream. Um, but you're more than welcome to come on in the next stream. We'll see if we can get you on first. Uh, I, I just wanted to really make the point with Harpel that um, if you go back, you can't go back to an eternal uh, sequence of causes so ultimately, there has to be the first cause, which has to be uncreated, because otherwise, an infinite number of steps would mean that we would never get to this step, which is the universe as it exists today. Because if you have to go back infinitely for infinite steps, uh, you'd simply be going back further and further in time. You could never, ever arrive at the present time. Mind if I read something about carbon? Yeah, Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So the my mysterious prevalence of carbon in the universe, because it's very profound, this. This is like, how did this happen? Uh, Hoyle's contribution to the discovery of fine-tuning began in the 1950s, when he discovered what, what he discovered shocked him and eventually shocked his atheism. Hoyle knew that the universe contained a surprising abundance of carbon. He also knew the production of the element carbon was crucial to all known forms of life. Carbon forms long chain like molecules that can carry information and store the energy that living cells need to survive. People have speculated about life based on other elements such as silicon existing somewhere in the cosmos. But physicists have largely rejected this possibility for decades. As Robert Dick for one Riley put in 1961, it is well known that carbon is required to make physicists. Indeed, carbon based life is the only known form of life. And carbon has features that make it uniquely suitable as a basis for complex chemistry and life. For instance, carbon is essential for forming sufficiently stable long chain like molecules capable of storing and processing genetic information. Carbon also combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide in essential chemical reactions. Carbon dioxide is a gas so it can as easily escape cells as waste and readily mix throughout the biosphere. In contrast, Silicon dioxide is a solid familiar to us in the form of sand, and it cannot participate in biochemistry. For a time, Hoyle himself entertained the idea that other chemical elements might form the basis for life. At one point, he wrote a novel speculating that cloud-like creatures might have self-organized from interstellar dust composed presumably of a variety of elements. Nevertheless, Hoyle later came to recognize the absolute necessity of carbon, making what he discovered about its synthesis all the more startling. Hoyle knew that carbon is produced from the nuclear reactions taking place inside stars. He and other physicists thought that the most plausible pathway for building heavier elements, such as carbon, from lighter elements, such as hydrogen and helium, would require incremental acc accretion. In other words, they envisioned individual protons or neutrons, uh, known collectively as nucleons, colliding with lighter elements to produce successively heavier elements. They thought this process could build heavier elements one proton or neutron at a time, started from the lightest element, hydrogen, with its one protein. Their models of how this might have occurred generate expected ratios of lighter elements to heavier elements. And these ratios match the observed ratios in the universe, at least for the first light elements. For example, the nuclear physicists Ralph Alpha, Hans Beth, and George Gamow demonstrated that fusion reactions in early universe would result in the same relative abundance of the lightest elements as observed today roughly 90% hydrogen and 10% helium by number of atoms as opposed to mass. But fusing together these lighter elements to form elements heavier than the helium requires passing through atomic structures with more than four protons and neutrons, in particular nuclei with five total protons and neutrons. Nuclear physicists know that these to be unstable and call this barrier between lighter and heavier elements the five nucleon crevice. This barrier results from the incredibly short half-lives about one trillionth of a trillionth of a second of five nuclear configurations. These include lithium with three protons and two neutrons and helium five with two protons and three neutrons. What they had encountered was something like a 20 foot ladder with the rungs at the bottom and top, but only one rung in the middle, making it impossible to climb, except the situation was worse than that. Not only could the rung in the middle not be reached, but if it could be reached, it would vanish after only one trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Gamma and Alpha in particular thought long and hard about this problem and considered various ideas how to leapfrog the unstable five nucleon configurations of subatomic particles. They envisioned these helium atoms with two protons and two neutrons each, 
helium-4, coming together to make the most common form of carbon, carbon-12. With its characteristic six proton and six neutrons, they rejected this pathway as implausible. However, they estimated the incredible improbability of these three helium atoms colliding simultaneously. Gamma-1 alpha discovered a kind of cosmic dilemma. Collisions between smaller elements that skipped over the five nucleon step were incredibly unlikely. Collisions that produced a five nucleon transition element would immediately disintegrate. There seemed no plausible path from the early conditions of the universe to the heavier elements capable of supporting life. Whether one assumed a finite and dynamic universe or Hoyle's steady state continuous creation concept. Hoyle then considered a more radical alternate pathway. Based on quantum mechanical principles, he suggested that one nucleus of helium might combine readily with beryllium, eight nucleus, so to form carbon. Though beryllium eight atoms are highly unstable, they have half-lives just enough longer than elements with five nucleons to make a collision with a single helium atom likely enough to provide a plausible pathway for building carbon, or so it seemed at first. Hoyle soon recognized a problem that required significant fine tuning to solve. He calculated that the total energy of the beryllium eight atom and the helium four atom exceeded the total energy of the carbon 12 atom. Consequently, the two smaller atoms would only fuse readily to form carbon if a high energy version of carbon existed, one with precise excitation state to a resonance matching the combined energies of beryllium-8 and helium-4 and the kinetic energy generated inside massive stars. A resonance is an, en in an, energy, is an energy level where two nuclei can, in accord with quantum mechanical principles, readily combine to form a new nucleus. Hoyle calculated the combined energy for helium-beryllium and determined that a carbon existing state would need to have precisely 7.65 megaloterarium volts, more energy than the ground energy state for carbon-12. Since Hoyle knew that the universe contained large amounts of carbon, and since he could think of no other plausible pathway for its production, he predicted the existence of the precise ex excited energy state that he had calculated. Later, he visited the Kellogg Radiation Laboratory at Caltech and managed to convince an initially skeptical nuclear physicist named Willie Fowler to perform the required test to determine whether carbon with such an ex ex excitation state existed. In a striking example of theory leading to a specific empirical discovery, Fowler later confirmed the existence of carbon with an energy level with precisely the resonance that Hoyle predicted. Thus, Hoyle demonstrated a plausible pathway to carbon from the lighter elements, one that could bypass the five nucleon crevice. There was one problem, however. The carbon resonance level had to be just so, or the whole process wouldn't work. And this raised the question of how it got that way. The resonance levels of different elements are a consequence of many factors and can be calculated using the equations of quantum chromodynamics a subdiscipline of quantum mechanics. Thus, the resonance levels of carbon would have been different if different factors had been in play. And if these resonance levels had been different, then beryllium-8 and helium-8-4 could not have been combined to form carbon-12. Then life would likely have not have arisen in the universe. All this led Hoyle to marvel that carbon did fall come in a form with the precise energy level needed to allow the smaller elements of beryllium and helium to combine to form it but it also led him and other physicists to explore what conditions were needed to ensure that carbon would have the right resonance level, allowing it to form. The question of how carbon acquired its precise favorable resonance turned Sandra, out to be just- Sandra. Stop. Oh, come on, it's awesome. <laughs> I gotta keep going, man, I gotta keep going. You're gonna finish the whole book. No, it's just, it kills it, bro. This idea that carbon can just come. I'm so, you know what broke up us? It's when you turn the page. <laughs> Is it? You gotta read this book, bro. Blow your mind. So, 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 so the way it continues. I won't need to know. You just read all of it. Not really. Let's skip the pages. But the thing is, this you see with the carbon, it's a result of fine tuning in itself to get to the state where it could be used to form life. And when you come to the um, the probabilities of that. <laughs> Mine. What a book. So, suffice it to say, all, what you read just basically said the circumstances which allow carbon to exist can't be accounted for in our current chemical models. Would that be reasonable? It would say that, yes. So for carbon okay, to right. exist in the universe, it needed to be a precise way, fine-tuned to a point so that it could become what it became, life um life forming and the the i'm trying to find the odds they don't 
<laughs> well, see, no, but this is how you demolish people like Harpel, who come on acting like they know what they're talking about when they know nothing. Well, I think to be fair to Harpel, he did say that he. There's nothing to be fair about. Well, no, I mean, you said he wasn't proficient in science, and, and then bang on about science. Yeah. Well, this is. Let me tell another about Chelsea. Then start telling you all about Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, this is the point. Why? Saying Harry Kane is a good striker for them. I just want to say to Dial. I just want to say to. If I, uh, no, listen, listen about. It. If I start talking about Chelsea, yeah, and I start saying, you know what though, I think they should get rid of, you know, that uh, Mane on the left and their keeper, you know, that what's his name, That's Hugo Lloris or something. I don't have anyone. It just to be going know. nuts. It just to be going nuts. What are you talking about? That's not that's not the Chelsea keeper. Chelsea keeper's Mendy. It's not Hugo Hamza, Lloris. Quick question, Hamza. Quick question. The fans are demanding this, and we owe them something because they waited what's this that? long. Can you read the mug for them? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Dylan, oh, you get your chance, bro. Because Listen, I just want to say, um, uh, Dylan, are you there? Oh, I didn't even notice I was on. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan we, we, we're really, really like way over the time, but I, because you're, you, you've been waiting a long time, I just wanted to say to you is it possible you can maybe come on to the next stream? Because uh, I feel that we can't have like another half an hour conversation. It's already one one twenty a.m. We've got to uh, perform our, our last prayer. We're already quite late for that. So um, would you excuse us, please, and maybe come on next time? Would that be okay? Oh, yeah, that's fine, man. Yeah, I got a couple of people that want to ping me next time you all go live. Yeah. So are you an atheist? No Silence. So, yeah. Sorry? Are you an atheist or a Christian? Uh, atheist. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yes, I like the craziness continues. Inshallah. Yeah. So um, have a lovely morning. Or come, come on Open Forum on Sunday. Oh, we do an yeah. Open Forum Sunday, though. Speaker's Corner Sunday, isn't it? Um, oh. No, not Open Forum Sunday. Yeah, so if we're going Speaker's Corner, then we're not going to do Open Forum. I mean, but... there might be an Open Forum with Ejaz and a couple other people who don't usually come on the streams. That's oh, always yeah, a can, possibility. Yeah, we can, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be Open Forum. Like, it's not like I have a Speaker's Corner to go to. I mean, in any case. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, brother, you can come on to the next stream or go on to... Uh, brother Ejaz, have you got a stream on tomorrow, on Sunday? Not tomorrow, sorry, on Sunday. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's Saturday. I know, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> track of, No, no. I think it's getting a little late. Yeah. Um, Dylans, if we don't have anything on Sunday, we can probably have you on uh, two weeks from now. <laughs> no worries. I'll probably get pinged for it. All right. You have a great evening. Good night. Have a good night. Right. You too. Take care. So Take tomorrow care. we have uh, Abu Alia on um, EF Dawa. Uh, yes. It's called the Seekers Corner, and Abu Alia will try to do this every Friday uh, in the evening, just as a reminder to brothers and sisters as we move into the weekend. Uh, mashallah, his streams are very, very um, um, beneficial, brothers. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, what we would uh, urge you all to do is don't just limit your viewing to these type of discussions and debates. They are good, and of course, we do learn things from them. Uh, but we need to also learn the core tenets of our religion and that's where you get that from by coming on to those type of uh streams it's just going to be uh abu alia by himself um so he's going to be pretty much solo uh, just giving a, a nice reminder um for us to inshallah contemplate on think or, or about and, and to learn from uh, brother hamza are you on the um uh, are you on this friday as well or no, um, I might do. I'm probably be in the shop on um, Saturday, uh, Sunday speakers corner, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday FPL, and um, FPL. Do, you, do you know what the FPL is? Jazz. We have enough. Oh, it e jazz. So basically, on Hamza's den, if you remember, you remember. Played the fifth. You need to become a member, then you can join the FPL league. And what we do every Wednesday, me and Chris, we do a uh, FPL live stream about who pick what. Oh. We show the league. We show. Yeah, but the... I'm, no, whooping like, I... you, I'm whooping you right now on the EFL. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's one, one game, one game wonders. So basically, yeah. we um, we go through all the everyone's teams. You know, the ones who are top, bottom. Uh -huh. Chris's team, my team. What went wrong? What we're going to do next time? Bring some guests on. Talk about football. Really cool, man. I think I you'd enjoy it. Inshallah, inshallah, I'll probably try to subscribe. Yeah, but you need to, you need to become a member of the channel to be able to uh, participate. And also, when you become a member of the channel now, I've created Discord, so you automatically become part of the Discord as well, inshallah. 
And sure, it's kind of funny you're talking about Discord because half the time you can't figure out how to share your screen or how to see your screen being shared on Discord. Yeah, well, someone... the, 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 the boys and girls on Discord are teaching me how to use Discord oh, very nicely. Mashallah. They create, really mashallah, you know, honestly, you know what's happened, mashallah, the Denzians, they've, they've gone away themselves because they enjoy talking to each other so much during my live streams. They've actually created their own Discord so that they can continue communicating throughout. And then from there, we've, we've connected it all to the to the members of the YouTube channel and the patrons. So the patrons and the YouTube can all use the Discord. And then, like I say, from the Discord, we're breaking it down to different titles. And then, like I said, we're going to send fishing ships out. Yeah, bring it. We're going to send the fishing ships out to Clubhouse and stuff to uh, catch some Christians and atheists. Ah, uh, I get lost of that. I'm just uh, honestly, your team. We're such an apple by Troy Deeney, 60 man. points, 60 points, Hamza. My Gladman could do better than that on FPL. Right. Listen, someone got... had like 21 points we had to laugh at. So we, they had, <laughs> they had a thing as their captain in goal. What do you think the captain? Why would you make your captain in goal? You don't get. And it was it was the uh, it was a Tottenham keeper. <laughs> guys, guys, as interesting as your you oh, okay, no, as right. interesting as your discussion is about um, grown men kicking a leather ball around a field and getting paid ridiculous amounts of money, uh, though they Can do. I just very, respond to this comment very quickly. They do it very skillfully. Okay. Um, this is yeah. what this is what scientists say. Uh, this John Walton, fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh and research professor of chemistry at the University of St Andrews, Meyer's book is a masterclass. It does irreparable damage to atheist rhetoric and shows the God hypothesis offers the best explanation of our finely tuned, information-rich universe. Because remember one thing, atheists, our experience tells us, a information can only be generated by an intelligent agency. It doesn't come accidentally. Standard. Hamza, they tricked you into reading from the book again. I don't care. I don't care. Okay, Hamza, somebody wanted the title of the book again. Don't. Just don't. So you can just show it. I don't care. The, the Return of the God Hypothesis by Dr. Stephen. Because there are people that do care. So the trolls can, oh, let's get Hamza to read it again. Ha, that's all I'm allowed. But there are people there, subhanAllah, so thinking, wow, mashallah, I want to know that information. <laughs> I don't just, care. just show the book again and the title because some somebody wanted to know the title of the book. So it's called The Return of After the God, God Hypothesis. Hypothesis by Stephen. Stephen. And the beautiful thing what this guy does, he takes the three recent scientific discoveries that reveal the mind behind the universe. So he takes quantum mechanics, he takes multiverse theory, he takes uh, DNA. Like I said, all three sciences, the only conclusion is God. It's not God of the gaps. It's the only explanation. If, if I could say something briefly to Brother Abbas Chagrin. Um, on this point, there have been responses to his books. I think I've read at least one of them. And rather than saying he's wrong, what they say is that of the scientific options he chooses, they disagree with some of the options he's chosen, not that his conclusions are necessarily false. And so it moves from a conversation about science and methodology to that about opinion and philosophy. So the book squarely sticks on science, and I think that is admirable. Most of the time, the, the critics of him criticize him. Rather yeah, than hit what as he's an saying. individual, yes, yeah, they don't like that most of it's ad hominem. Yeah, but he's got like Lawrence Krauss and uh, Sam Harris, Harris and Richard Dawkins running. All right, let's call it a night. Boys. I will read this book on my channel now. So, there, like it, don't like it, tune in, don't tune in. I don't care. Let's call maybe let's someone in 10 years' time will appreciate it. Let's call it a night, uh, brother. Ijaz, what have you got happening on your channel? Where's the lion? Where's the lion? You've got a lion here, have we? I have just... nothing coming up uh, live, but I do have a couple of prepared videos coming out soon, inshallah. inshallah. And I look forward to your future videos as well, brother Abbas, on inshallah. Conversation inshallah. Islam and on Hamza's then as well. Lovely. So with that, guys, we're going to say a big assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nearly four hours wow. today. We went over by an hour and a half. Okay. So See you on the shop Saturday. You can't blame me for cutting the stream short every time, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Salaam. Salaam.